College Football Primetime. Brought to you by City. Whatever your story is, your City card can help you write it. Because City never sleeps. Corona and Corona Light, official sponsors of the timeout. Relax responsibly. And Energizer Lithium. Keep going. Skydivers right on target here in Louisville, getting set for kickoff between Kansas State and the Cardinals of Louisville. Landed right at about the 45-yard line to deliver the game ball. Kansas State and Louisville getting set to go. You see the coin toss right now that Louisville has won. Rob Stone is with us tonight down on the field. How are you doing, Stone? Very well, Reese. Thanks. You know, this is the first midweek game for Kansas State since 1994, but originally, it wasn't supposed to be played tonight. Originally, this was booked for Saturday, but just about 19 miles down the road here from Papa John Stadium sits a certain golf course known as Valhalla. And on Saturday, it'll just happen to be hosting day two of the Ryder Cup. Now, both schools did not want to compete against the Ryder Cup, so on February, they got together, discussed trying to move this one, and they found a comfortable date right here on Wednesday. Now, that date was very beneficial to Kansas State. Yes, it gives them more recovery time on the back end and more academic time. But Rod Prince told me before kickoff today, originally they had hotels booked for Saturday. Well, when the Ryder Cup was awarded to Louisville, they got kicked to the curb. They had no hotel rooms. <laughs> they had to book themselves about an hour out of town when it got moved to Wednesday. They were able to move it about, what are we, about three quarters of a mile away here from the stadium. And yeah, right on cue, my cell phone buzzing up. Yeah, Louisville Chamber of Commerce. I'll just pass that one on to Coach right now. <laughs> All right, Stoner. Glad that everybody found suitable accommodation. Steve Cragthorpe has here in Louisville. Took over for Bobby Petrino in his second season after rebuilding Tulsa. He's 7-7 seven and seven so far. Frank Dorp is Tom Jurich's guy, and he has gotten plenty of support from the administration. Thus far, neither team has really been tested, save for Louisville's game against Kentucky, and frankly, the Cardinals flunked that test. This is the first measuring stick for Kansas State, which wanted to integrate about 19 junior college recruits this year, get a couple of game speed reps under their belt. They were able to do that with a couple of big wins, and tonight they'll find out how they fare on the road. Louisville is kicking off. Chris Philpott puts his toe to it, and we're underway here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. One of those junior college transfers, Aubrey Quarles, returns it. It's out across the 20-yard line before he's knocked down by a host of guys in black jerseys. Here is the star quarterback for Kansas State, Josh Freeman, and he has all the tools, all the intangibles. He's 6'6", weighs about 250 pounds, fairly mobile, but a pure pocket passer. Threw for over 3,300 yards last year, and thus far this year, completing over 75% of his passes. He has yet to throw an interception. In fact, dating to last year, he's gone 125 passes without a pick. Wildcats will put it in play from their own 24. Freeman with Keith and Valentine behind him. Another junior college transfer running back. Freeman throws on the first play, and he throws complete just down over the 25-yard line to Deion Murphy. Our Jack Links impact players, Brandon Banks, who is the lightest wide receiver in the football bowl subdivision, soaking weight. He weighs 142 pounds. Prince said they told him you'll be shocked by how small he is. Deion Murphy, who just made the catch, was the Big 12 Offensive Newcomer of the Year last year, and Keaton Valentine, the running back, a former walk-on, a preferred walk-on who was awarded a scholarship and does the bulk of the ball carrying for the Wildcats. A little shuffle pass on the inside, and Valentine it's across the 30, and he's close to the first down. He's going to come up about a yard short. It's going to bring up a third down. Just up above the score, at the top of your screen, you'll be able to see the starting lineup for the Kansas State offense led by Freeman. So two plays, two successful ones so far, Mayday. Well, so far, I like the way that Josh Freeman's operating the offense. All those just two plays, you can see that he is the leader of this offensive bunch, and he has total command of this offense thus far. Third down, and this is where the Louisville defense has been stout allowing only six of 30 conversions on third down through their first two games. Freeman's going to try to get it himself, and he does. And, Reese, that's what six foot six, 250 pounds does for you. When it's third and short, you don't need a running back because you got him. He's the guy that's taking the ball from the center. When it's third and short, you aren't going to be real successful on defense. It's third and eight and third and ten that make you successful. What about all those great calls you had when it was third and one, third hey, and two hey. defensively? You come in there, you put eight or nine in the box and go ahead and stuff them. I made the calls then. <laughs> two tight end set, and you'll see a lot of that with single back for Kansas State. 
on offense. Freeman with a rush, showing off the arm, and he's got a man down there, and it is again Deion Murphy. Number one, Cleveland. Murphy had one catch for 70 yards coming into the nine. He comes up with another big play here for 38. And, Coach, what a fabulous job by the offensive line. And I like how fluid Freeman is in the pocket. He feels the rush coming, but he stands in the pocket, takes the hit, throws the ball down the field, and gets it to Murphy. But this is a nice job of Murphy of concentrating on the ball, bringing it in. Both hands around it. That's a catch. Yeah, but a very well-designed play to isolate the defensive back one-on-one, -on -one and you can't win. Randy, Randy Smith, our referee tonight, as Kansas State tried to get the ball snapped. And you saw big Adrian Grady, who wound up in the backfield of Kansas State, doing anything he could to get things stopped to give the replay officials time to have a look at Deion Murphy's catch and see if he, in fact, held on to it as he tumbled to the ground. I'd like to take another look at it. It looked like he caught it, wrapped it around both hands, hit the ground, and he had possession of it. Let's take another look at it here, Coach. I thought it was a catch, but it was a very well-designed play. They kept the That's safety oh, short. There's, there's, uh, that, yeah, he's down well before that ball comes loose, don't you think? Yes. When you have 53 and a third yards to operate without a safety, man, the receiver has such an advantage. It was a great throw, great route. Oh, so that's that old defensive back coach coming out in you, and you oh. always give the advantage to the offense. <laughs> well, Patrick had pretty good coverage, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, ruling really on the field is confirmed. Your first down, Kansas State. So the ruling, as we expected, is confirmed. It'll be first and 10 Wildcats from the 26 of Louisville after the 38-yard game. That's another good way to have good third down defense and let him hit a 70-yarder <laughs> on second down. <laughs> The wit razor sharp for our first time in the booth. <laughs> Stats can sometimes be misleading, I guess. <laughs> Receivers bunched to the left. Both tight ends on that side for Freeman. Murphy fakes the reverse. Flags flying in as Valentine got just across the 25. Chris Campa. The junior from Orlando, the junior college transfer. Personal there to foul, make stop. face mask, 43 on the defense. It'll be half the distance, automatic first down. Coming into the game, Louisville had only given up 23 first downs plus nine by penalty. That is now their 10th first down they've given up on defense with a penalty. And above our score panel, before there's a score on the board yet, you'll be able to see the starting defense from Louisville, which has put up some good numbers, but penalties have been a problem for the Cardinals. They rank among the worst teams in the nation, being penalized thus far in the young part of the season, I know, but over 70 yards per game in their first two outings. Now it's another first down for Kansas State inside the Louisville 15. Freeman had one right in his mustache, had to let it go. He was looking for Murphy. Applying the pressure was John Dempsey, a weak side linebacker who got right in on Freeman. And there is Ron English, who you talked about him in the pregame. He certainly put together a sparkling resume as the defensive coordinator at Michigan. Well, the two years as defense coordinator at Michigan, they ranked 10th in the country last year, 24th. He's done a nice job with his defense. They've become aggressive. They're playing more physical. And you saw they got pressure there, Mark. And not only that, he deserves a head coaching job. If he can turn this program around Louisville's defense around, he should have a shot at a head coaching job because he did a great job at Michigan. Three wide, missed here on the snap. The ball is loose in the backfield. Kansas State had a couple of shots at it, but Louisville is recovered. L.D. Scott coming in from the defensive line, and Freeman wasn't ready for the snap. And that was just a miscue. Bad cooperation between the center and his shotgun snap and his quarterback, Josh Freeman. There he's looking, setting up the defense, looking at what the defense is doing, setting up the offense. And he didn't have a chance because he wasn't looking at the ball. The ball hit him right in the face. And he was going to make some type of adjustment with the alignment, and it cost him. As Jordan Bedore, the star center, hit the shotgun snap and gave Louisville an opportunity to stop the drive. Yes. Now the Cardinals on offense with Hunter Cantwell at quarterback. First play goes to Brock Bowen, and Bowen slamming his way up over the 30-yard line. 
Hunter Cantwell has bided his time at Louisville to back up to Brian Brom. He's had opportunities to start games in the past. He, too, a big, strong-armed kid, 6'4", 236 pounds. To make all the throws, sometimes still struggling a bit, the coaches say, with recognition and progressions. He certainly has a dangerous weapon attached to that right shoulder of his. Now second and short. Cantwell firing to the outside, and it's complete. He's got his man, Doug Beaumont, and Beaumont gets free and slips down the sideline to be marked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. That'll be a first down for the Cardinals. Take a look now at tonight's impact players on the Louisville offense. And we've already had a little peek at one of them. Doug Beaumont just made that catch. He didn't have a single catch last year, played mainly on special teams. Eric Wood, the Kansas State staff, believes that perhaps he is the best center in the country. And you'll see several running backs tonight. One of them will be Victor Anderson, who went for over 100 yards the last time out against Tennessee Tech. Bowen, though, getting it instead of Anderson, and Bowen getting up close to midfield, and this was what Louisville wanted to do, to try to slow down the blitzes from Kansas State. And they're running right at them so far, as you will be able to see the starting lineup for the Cardinals just above the score. I like the way that Brock Bowen sets the tempo of this offense, running the football. They call him the Bowen ball. He's six foot, 240 pounds, but he gets the job done. Second leading rusher last year. And right now, the first series of the offense for Louisville, he's getting the job done. That's right. Second and short. Everybody to the right, and Cantwell rolls that way and makes the easy throw, and it's another first down. And again, it's Beaumont making the grab, and he's got two quick catches as Louisville has marched into Kansas State territory. Coach, you got to like the tempo of this game. Both of these quarterbacks are efficient. Louisville getting the job done, running the ball on first down, passing in second down. I'm still upset about the fumble. That should never happen on the snap. You either clap your hands or raise your foot. You don't snap the ball, and then they just put themselves in a precarious position, and Louisville's taking advantage of the momentum. On first down, now Joe Tronzo blocking fullback in the backfield. He'll lead the way for Bowen. Bowen's got a little room if he can get the corner. And inside the 40 before the defensive back, Ray Cheatham stopped him. Mark, I think they've run, what, six plays, and that's the sixth different formation that Louisville has shown already. And they've run a couple of runs basically out of, the same, out of a different formation but the same run. But what's key is that's what you try to confuse the defense. Show them a different formation but still run the football up front. And here's Ron Prince. He's concerned about... Louisville's ability to move the ball on the ground, although the Cardinals are without a couple of starters on the offensive line. is oh, Cantwell apparently had Beaumont. I don't know if he saw the ball coming. He had two receivers that were open. It was dealer's choice on that one, and he just overthrew Beaumont. Well, it was a real route where the guy ran the flat route, which he had completed twice, and he turned it up. You're going to see here on the replay, he wasn't expecting the ball. Uh, I'm not sure he could have gotten it anyway, but I'm still not sure he even saw it coming. So it'll bring up now a third and eight for the Cardinals. We saw that starting lineup for the Cards. They're missing big George Bussey, and their left tackle was out with a high ankle sprain. Josh Chichester is in, and he's throwing for Chichester, the six-foot-eight wide receiver, and he threaded it in there in front of Josh Moore for the first down. That was one of those plays where hang on to your hat, somebody's fixing the score, Mark. That was almost picked <laughs> off, or if he kept his foot, he would have scored. But well, Coach, talk about a big-time throw by Hunter Cantwell. Stands tall in the pocket, puts the ball only where the receiver's going to get it. If the defensive back turns a little bit quicker, it could have been picked, but he put it right there where the receiver could get it for the first down. Chichester at 6'8", among a group of players, the third tallest in college football this year. We had to go low to get that one, Bilal Powell into the game. He carries it over the left side. It's down close to the 25-yard line for a pickup of almost four. There just wasn't enough margin of error for me with our <laughs> quarterback. <laughs> and with Louisville on the move, almost halfway through the first quarter, you can see the Kansas State starting lineup on defense, so you'll see several different players come in with different defensive packages over the course of the night. Those are the starters. You see Ian Campbell's name up there at the moment. He is the star and the leader. Two tight ends, both of them to the right, so 
Blum was pulling. There's a flag down and a reverse to Trent Guy. And Guy dances inside the 20-yard line. We'll have to see what the flag is. Well, what happened on that? The guy went in motion and the tailback moved. Two people were moving at the same time. We'll bring it back with a five-yard penalty. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal shift on the offense. Penalties decline. Clipping. 65 on the offense. That penalty will be administered. 15 yards. Second down. That penalty was on Josh Byram, 289-pound sophomore from McKees Rock, Pennsylvania, who's starting tonight because usual starter Mark Wetterer is out with a high ankle sprain. Louisville a little bit beaten up on the offensive front, but playing well so far, uh, despite that late, latest penalty. They definitely are, and what offensive coordinator Jeff Brown's been doing is a quick tempo. Make sure that you get rid of the football in the hurry at the quarterback position so you can't put pressure on them. There's the clip right there. You see it. He's on Josh Moore, not close. He was trying to get around in front, but didn't come close. Good call by the officials. Cantwell firing down the middle and got his man. It's Tychester again, and the big fella's inside the 20, and he's got enough for a Louisville first down. This was a sight adjustment, Mark. They came with the blitz. The receiver automatically runs a slant route. Nice throw, nice catch, nice improvision. They're making sure that they're not going to give Kansas State the opportunity to get to the quarterback. That's why that ball is out of quarterback Hunter Cantwell's hand in a hurry. Chichester, because of some injuries, actually helped out for a few games on the Louisville basketball team last winter, though he has given up basketball now to concentrate on football, and he's had an impact in the first quarter of this one. He's bowling, he's bowling and rolling his way down close to the 10-yard line and leaving Wildcat defenders in his wake. This is a completely different team from what I saw at Kentucky. They're playing a physical football game. They're just playing smash mouth football and very opportunistic throwing. Of course, I think it's because they can establish the run and get positive yards on first down. Then it's almost dealer's choice on second down for Hunter Kent while he can throw it or run it. 12th play of the drive. Comes from the Kansas State 11. Bowen's got it. Bowen, big time collision in there. Mm -hmm. Stepping up, free safety Chris Carney is very good in run support. And Bowen's going to be just a hair short. The first down would appear to bring up a third down. Oh, he's physical, coach. I like the way he runs with the football. He does run low, but the safety did a nice job of filling up there. I don't ever get the thrill that he might break the big one, but he sure does go north and foul. Oh, I'll take three, four, five yards a clip anytime. Not on third and 12. Everybody tight, single coverage at the top of the screen, but they're going to keep it on the ground, and Bowen pushes it in there. Ula Pamelli and Olu Hall on the stop for Kansas State, and it's going to be fourth down. What do you do? Oh, you go for it on this. Hey, you have an awful lot to gain and very, very little to lose. You did not play well against Kentucky. You won a overwhelmingly against a very poor defense team. Send your team a message. Should have got on third down though, Mark. Yeah, when you were coaching at South Carolina and Notre Dame, right now the kicking team would be out there. <laughs> but it would have been the punt team, and that's important. <laughs> Go on fourth down. Single back. It's Bowling, Bowling slamming up into the middle. That's close. And Johnny Burns, the tight end, is signaling that he got it. Unfortunately, he only has an opinion, not necessarily a vote. I don't I think, think he short. made it. No, they marked him short. Ian Campbell, Hanson Sakona stepping in with the brakes on Bowen, and they might have stopped him just a hair short. And the first down of the ball is marked just inside the eight-yard line. They're going to bring out the chains. I'll tell you, this is a fabulous job by Kansas State's defense. The last two plays of staying low and having defensive leverage over the offensive line. I told you to kick it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> so both teams miss opportunities in the red zone in Kansas State and Louisville with just under six minutes to play in the first quarter. Scoreless. The estimated 40 plus thousand just erupted because there is the greatest of all time. Louisville native Muhammad Ali in his hometown here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium tonight. Ali still revered around the world and particularly here in his hometown, which is the home to the Muhammad Ali Museum. Seems chills up here just to, just to see Ali. 
First play after Kansas State gets it back. Another completion from Josh Freeman to Aubrey Quarles. He's knocked out of bounds. Got enough for the first down. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Rob? Well, after that failed fourth down attempt by Louisville, the Cardinal offensive coach is very upbeat with the team coming off. Now, defensive coordinator Ryan English, very animated, very active during that last offensive set. Three separate times he had conversations with the secondary, telling them, guys, play the bump, concerned about the play action. Remember, the one stat he was worried about, not rushing yards given up, but how many times Freeman throws over the head of his defenders tonight. That's right, Robbie. Talked to us yesterday extensively. Leverage. Keep the ball in front and inside. That was the mantra coming in. Keith and Valentine gets up over the 20 as they can't keep it on the ground. So the Louisville drive went 14 plays and netted nothing. Kansas State marched it down with a couple of big plays and then botched a shotgun snap and got nothing. So a lot of action, but no scoring yet, guys. Well, to get down there and not get any points like on a par five in golf, you reach it in two, and all of a sudden, instead of putting for an eagle, you're putting for a double bogey because you five putt it, Mark. I always put for par. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, from 190 yards away, huh? Put, put you on the Ryder Cup team, if uh, if that's always the case, maybe. Imagine Paul Azinger would settle for some of those and birds mixed in. There might be a hold there on Kansas State as Freeman scrambled and got plenty for the first down, but there were a couple of guys locked up in the backfield. 76 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, second down. Brock Unruh was the man who was nabbed. So we've talked a lot about Ron English, the defensive coordinator of Louisville, and he brought a real attitude to the defense. Earl Heyman telling us that when English gets after you, he said he's saying all kinds of words, some words he makes up, there's spit <laughs> flying. I mean, there, there's plenty of intensity, but you see, I know it's early and the statistics can be misleading, but Louisville's defense was woeful last yeah, year. Yeah, but they, they, they're physical, they hit, they're in good fundamental position, Mark. I don't even think you could have blocked that defense. I think they're excited. They're enthusiastic about what they're doing they've got somebody that's on the sidelines and that's in practice that's in their face pushing them to get better and to be better holding penalty has pushed the ball back to second and 16 freeman throws again gets it out to Dion murphy who's been heavily involved in the passing game so far in a short game it makes it at least a somewhat manageable third down opportunity Boy, wait. One thing about Freeman, Coach, that's really impressive to me, not only his footwork for a big man, but he can throw that frozen roll by most outs. He does, but boy, did you see the nice fundamentals that quarterback executed in an open field. Mm -hmm. Good tackle. One-on-one -on -one in open field? Absolutely. Well, Freeman has hit five of his first six. He needs 10 yards as the crowd starts to rally in support behind the Louisville defense. Showing a little blitz. They're coming, picked up nicely, and a fire for Murphy, and he's not going to make the catch. Cats will have to put it away, punt it away. Offensive line did a nice job up front, Mark, at least giving him a little time. And not only that, Josh Freeman recognized where his pickups were in the offensive line when they were going to pick up the blitz and rolled away from the pressure. On to punt now is George Pearson, who hasn't had a lot of work and barely going in K-State's first two games. And very average punt, but he's going to get a decent roll. And it'll be touched dead at the 37-yard line of the Cardinals, and that's where they'll put it in play. So Josh Freeman in Kansas State, not exactly off to a hot start yet. We're scoreless in the Ville. College Football Primetime is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky, Feed Your Wild Side, and in part by Acura, Acura Advance. Beautiful Valhalla Golf Course this weekend, the side of the Ryder Cup. Play starts on Friday. The Europeans have won five of the last six. It's about 19 miles away. Louisville and Kansas State squaring off, and Hunter Cantwell finds Doug Beaumont for a completion. Check in with John Saunders now. John, what do you have Sports Center right now? Well, Reese will start off in the National Football League after an 0 2 start, and their offense ranking 24th. Despite Adrian Peterson, Brad Childress of the Vikings is benching Tavares Jackson and going with Gus Brock for the rest of the season. Gilbert Arenas, meanwhile, has had debris surgically removed from his left knee. He says he'll miss at least the first month of the season. Team sources says that's optimistic, at least. That's quite a blow, not 
have arenas for that period of time. Second down run to Laval Powell, stopped by Hanson Sakona. Another of the junior college transfers on the Kansas State defense. It'll bring up a third down for Louisville. You have to be able to control the line of scrimmage in order to run the football consistently. And if you don't run the ball consistently, you can't run play action pass and mark. And the flag's flying. We have a substitution infraction. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 minutes in the huddle. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, the reason that they call that now is teams used to have 12 people in the huddle. Mark, you couldn't tell whether they had three wide outs, three tight ends, and stuff. Well, you might need 12 people on defense if you're Colorado to take care of an angry West Virginia team on Thursday night. College football primetime presented by Applebee's and Mountaineers going in to take on the Buffs, 8.30 Eastern time. Are they spreading some hawk love? This is Big 12 football, brother. Is, Don't play so, intermittals, So is, is Pat White a running quarterback, a passing quarterback? They keep changing it around. This week he's back to running uh, the I think you're going to see. Uh, I think you're going to see five running it. You're going to see 14 throwing it. Cantwell throwing the out pattern, and uh, Chichester was bobbling it, and the six-eight wide receiver needed every inch of it, but he couldn't quite put the glue on the fingertips to haul that one in. Coach, I don't understand. He's six foot eight, long arms. Why do they keep throwing the ball low to him? Put him across the middle of the field, <laughs> throw it up high, make it a jump ball situation, and he's going to catch it every time. Look at that. Well, that one was Throw up there. No, but that's to the outside. Well, that's true. But it was still up. Everybody else was covered. There has nobody open. They double covered every other receiver. Now Corey Getchy is on to punt, and uh, always dangerous Deion Murphy and a very dangerous Kansas State punt return team. We already blocked a couple this year. Murphy on the return, slips and falls, and marked down at about the 30-yard line. And that's where Freeman and the Wildcats will get it back for another opportunity. The offenses have slowed down a little bit. We're scoreless in the Ville. Back in Louisville, Cardinals have had a little bit to cheer about despite a 14-play drive that turned up scoreless. Josh Freeman has hit five of his first seven passes with a couple of miscues, a turnover on a shotgun snap, and a holding penalty at Florida K-State's effort as Freeman gets to the outside and dances out of bounds Number one, three, just short of the 40-yard line. Uh, Rob Stono, we saw Muhammad Ali here just a few moments ago. Yeah, and you're still seeing him right behind me getting in the car. I don't know if you guys could feel the energy down on the field, but or up there, but on the field, boy, did it resonate strongly when he got in the cart and drove through here. Of course, Muhammad Ali, a Louisville resident, spoke with his wife, Lonnie, and said, hey, you know, we're here to cheer on the football team. They're also here because you know, Muhammad is an ambassador for the city of Louisville, and he will be addressing both Ryder Cup teams tomorrow. How about that? A special moment for both of them, for sure. Well, thank you very much. It, it, and he's right. It did bring electricity when Ali is noticed in the building as Freeman throws right down the middle and diving to try to, to make the catch. Is little Brandon Banks, all 142 pounds of him, couldn't come up with it. It'll be third down and two. I mentioned a few moments ago when we saw Ali down on the field that the Muhammad Ali Center is here in Louisville. It opened back in November of 2005. It's down in Louisville's Museum Row in the West Main District downtown. And there's some exhibits based on Ali's core values of respect, confidence, conviction, dedication, giving, and spirituality. And there is Muhammad Ali, greatest of all time and one of the most charismatic athletes in the history of sport. Third and two, Freeman throwing short and has enough for the first down. And Jaron Mastrude, the tight end, making the grab. And the Louisville team, which has been very good on third down, has had Kansas State convert a couple of times against them. Well, they had second down and two and threw an incomplete, came right back and threw on the ball. But I just want to say this, the Ryder Cup team in the U.S. had dinner Monday night at the Muhammad Ali Museum. They thought it was spectacular, Mark. I wish I was there. I was always a fan of Muhammad Ali growing up. He was my, one of my greatest heroes growing up, and the things that he did growing up was really a big influence on me and my athletic career. He was for everybody, one of the ultimate showman in addition to being one of the great fighters as Freeman completes his pass to Aubrey Quarles on the outside. Quarles, another of the junior college transfers from Santa Rosa Junior College. He was an All-American there. Um, despite missing some time last year with a broken collarbone. Another first down for Kansas State as they move into Louisville territory again. I am surprised that they aren't even trying to run the ball. I saw the graphic.
Belichick identifying the number of junior college guys that one charged with running is another junior college transfer. Freeman will be throwing it again, and he's got his man. It's Banks, and Banks goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas State. That's why they didn't try to run the ball. <laughs> they did it off a play-action pass that caused the safety to freeze. Don't come up when they ain't running the ball. And I use eight for emphasis, not to illustrate the caliber of education I had at Kent State. You see, Ron Prince celebrating. That play was made possible. You mentioned the running game. Sometimes when running backs don't get the ball, one of the key things they can do is pass block and keep them. Valentine had a nice pick up on the edge to give Freeman plenty of time to throw that dart into Banks for the touchdown. Five plays, 69 yards, took 95 seconds, and Kansas State is on the board. Extra point is good off the toe of Brooks Rossman, and Kansas State, which has been a quick strike offense in the early part of this year, shows Louisville why. Cats up 7-0. Here's the man who scored the first touchdown of the night, Brandon Banks, 5'7", 142 pounds. And when Ron Prince was recruiting him, they warned him. They said, you're going to be shocked at how small he is. But when Prince saw him, he said he could run all the routes and make the grab. And the key here is selling the play action pass. Everyone thought the ball was going to the right-hand side. The left guard pulls to the right. But a great job of selling the play action pass. The offensive line held their ground. The back chipped on the edge. But here's the key. When you've got a quarterback that can throw the ball like this, Coach, on a frozen rope like a dart, anywhere around the field, it's tough to defend. You noticed that, too. <laughs> Rossman is set to kick it away. It's a boot into him. It's going to come down at about the 10-yard line, and they're returning. And Louisville on the short return. Looks like Johnny Patrick is there to return it. He's got up to just about the 20-yard line. Let's check in again with Rob Stone. Maurice, coach Prince with a very brief celebration on that touchdown. Then he went into anger mode. After Banks made it to the sideline, Prince stalked him, pulled him aside, said, look me in the eyes. You don't do that. Look me in the eyes. A JC kid, again, they have a lot of JC kids here. They want to set the tone early with these guys on what is allowed and not allowed with the Kansas State program. In, in terms of celebration, Rob? In terms of celebration, in terms of how you act after you score. Cantwell got drilled as he released it. Comes up just a little bit short as we are nearing the end of the first quarter. Amazing. We've played a whole quarter and no team has thrown a screen pass or run a draw yet. See, see if Louisville follows that sage advice from the press box here. I, I just felt that you have to do that if you're going to throw the ball as much as both teams are going to mark. Second and ten, Cantwell operating from his own 20. Trying to answer the quick strike, Kansas State touchdown. Cantwell fires and complete to Pete Nocta is tied in. Tight ends have long been a big part of the offense at Louisville. And despite the fact that Gary Burnage and Scott Coon are gone, Pete Nocta has stepped up, makes his fourth grab of the year. And Louisville picks up a first down on the final play of the first quarter. But it was Kansas State, a six-touchdown drive of five plays or fewer that grabbed the only score so far. Cardinals trying to avoid a second home loss. Kansas State's up 7-0. Back in Louisville, a Josh Freeman to Brandon Banks touchdown pass. The only touchdown of the first quarter. Kansas State with a 7-0 lead on Louisville. And now the Cardinals trying to answer. 
And the redshirt freshman back, Victor Anderson. And now Cantwell slowing down the middle. And that was almost intercepted. Gary Chandler had a shot at it. It was incomplete. We'll bring up a second down. We're pleased to be joined in the booth now by the voice of Monday Night Football. And uh, this weekend, the voice of the start of the Ryder Cup, Mike yep. Tirico. Hello, buddy. Good to be with your Hall of Fame teammates. How about this? Yeah. I'm glad you say that every time you come on every there. Time. It's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Well, you know what it is? It's because when I bust their chops the rest of the day, I can get away with Hall of Famers. And every want? turn. Yeah. Great to be with you guys. Good to see you all. Good to see you. Good game, too. No, yeah, it is. Game. Good start. Good opportunity for Louisville to try to prove itself after a disastrous opener against Kentucky. And there is Anderson who has the ball, breaking tackles and getting up close to the first down. Anderson, leading rusher on the team through two games with a good, strong run. Now, Mike, this is what you guys have coming up in the Ryder Cup. Obviously, some uh, some intensity, uh, some, I don't know, pre is pressure the right word on the Americans? It, it is. Americans haven't won. They've lost five of the last six. And the city of Louisville has really embraced the event. The people at the University of Louisville, Churchill Downs folks, Louisville Slugger folks, uh, the teams went to the Ali Museum. So this has really become a great community event, and Louisville's done a terrific job so far. Feel the intensity, people already showing up in town around as Cantwell, who's not necessarily the most nimble guy in the pocket, avoided the first guy but couldn't get past Brandon Harold, who gets his first sack of the year. Now, so, your partner here yes. has been the talk, guys, in the media center. People have <laughs> asked Paul Azinger, Coach Holtz here, is he going to address the team? Do you plan to address the team? So the Europeans know that they brought in the heavy <laughs> artillery to try to set the tone for the week. Well, I talked to them yesterday. We had a great visit. Yeah. They're excited and, to have you around. And then the yeah. message was? Well, if they want to say what I said, they'll tell you. I okay. give them the message. That's up to them. It's their talk, not mine. Yeah, well, after the sag, the pass not terribly accurate, though Anderson grabbed it for a short game. And, and, and look what he did for Notre Dame. He goes back to Notre Dame, gives him a pep talk. Look what they did to Michigan. <laughs> Although I will say that I thought it was in very poor taste when, when Charlie got knocked down that Lou sprinted over to grab the headset away from him immediately. So, I mean, come on. So if, if the Notre Dame thing happens, they win. And then yeah. if the U.S. team wins the Ryder Cup, does that mean you're available for hire? I, I want to tell you, but I can't do a thing with these two guys. So that just shows you. I could win with them. Go, not these. Uh, uh, Mike, a little hit. He's always available for uh, know, so thank But you. The, the fee just goes up. <laughs> Third and 16 for the Cardinals. Cantwell firing down the middle. He's got his tight end for a first down into Kansas State territory. Johnny Burns, the senior from Neptune Beach, Florida, making the grab. Cardinals on the move again. What do you... What do you think is going to happen in the Ryder Cup? How do you see it? Well, Coach, we'll watch this with you here. Just finding the tight end in the seam there between the backers and the secondary. Yeah, you guys know, talking about Cantwell and his ability. He does have that uh, ability that a lot of people are watching, even with the delivery guys. Yeah. A little bit of a wind-up that he's yeah. trying to shorten up some. Jeff Brom telling us yesterday that he has the arm to make all the throws. Sometimes the reads, the progression is not necessarily the strong suit. Brock Bowen getting down close to the 35-yard line. But one of the reasons he's having success is Kansas State's playing predominantly in man coverage, man free. And so he doesn't have to read coverage. He knows one-on-one. -on -one. You'll notice he's making some great throws to heavily covered receivers. If they mix up the coverage, this presents a problem. Coach, it's all about the offensive line, giving them time. You know, that's exactly where the play starts and where it's going to finish. He's still on that kick, huh? <laughs> he sounds like a comedian out of work. I hear that every week. Louisville's had a 14-play drive and got nothing out of it. Now the ninth play of the drive. Cantwell throwing again for Beaumont. Closely covered, and the ball is knocked away by Blair Irvin, the former baseball player who spent a few years in the Tampa Rays organization and now has returned to football, and he makes a fine play to keep Beaumont from getting it right on the K-State doorstep. This is a terrific play, and both of them fighting for the ball on the route. And I thought right here he almost had the ball. He had both hands on it, but lost control. Irvin got his hand in there nicely, but uh, the crowd is reacting. They think that, that Beaumont perhaps held it long enough and yeah. went out of bounds. Yeah, and it's an impartial crowd, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. They have heavily, heavily influenced the replay booth. Third down now for Cantwell, and again, Anderson makes a good grab out of the backfield and gets down close to the 30-yard line. You have to believe this is going to bring on the field goal unit. Anson Sakona there to make the stop. It'll be fourth and about three. Cardinals went for it on fourth down on their one deep drive and stuff. 
on a fourth and one. It was the offensive line that fouled him up. And yes. didn't no, do no, 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 no. Good point. <laughs> so, Mike, how difficult is it? One, you're going from golf for this weekend, and all of a sudden you're turning around, you're doing the Jets and the Chargers on Monday Night yeah. Football. It's got to be exciting. It's fun. It's like Reese. You bounce around to all these sports, and you rely on all of you experts. Like, <laughs> you guys are going to tell us what they're going to do on fourth and three, right? <laughs> I, I just said they were kidding. I perhaps uh, forgot that Art Carmody is no longer around right. for the Cardinals. They have a freshman kicker who's long field goals of 19 yarders. So, Craig Thorpe decides to go for it. Cantwell might be able to run for it, and he does. Cantwell sliding into the 25-yard line. They'll give him the 24, and it's a first down for Louisville. Very well executed play. They rolled him out because they felt a little bit of pressure. And with a man coverage, you're going to see here, Mark, there's nobody to contain him. It's a great job of Hunter Cantwell holding on to the ball. Look at the look he takes at the end of this play. Whew. A couple guys coming in headhunting. Olu Hall, the transfer from Virginia. Line Hall up all over the place, sometimes put his hand on the ground. Excellent pass rusher, one of the top players in America coming out of high school. He signed with the Cavaliers, had some academic issues there. He's gotten his act together now with Ron Prince at Kansas State. Here's Anderson with an empty cutback. Anderson, not only wrapped up by Josh Moore as he gets just across the 20-yard line, benefiting from the block of the tight end Johnny Burns, who had the big catch a few moments ago. There is Anderson, who's a freshman from here in Louisville. He, he has more shake, obviously, than, than uh, Rock Bowen does, or, or Powell, either one for that matter. What he has to really impress me is peripheral vision. He could see that cut it all the way back. Some people can't see. They say the blocking scheme up front. And on second down. Powell is in the backfield, and he's got it. But he lost a headgear. That was a fullback, Joe Tronzo, who lost his hat. Reggie Walker there to stop Powell after a very short game. Now, Mike, you've done a lot of games here yeah. at Louisville. You're certainly in the, spot. the Bobby Petrino era here. What, what's the what's the difference you see right now in the program? You, you know, you guys, you think if there was another two years maybe of the Petrino era, you would have had the depth within the program to continue going forward, and the changeover wasn't with the depth behind it. So it's going to take Steve a year or so, if he gets another couple of years, to get his kind of people, his kind of players in, because it's not exactly the same. I do know this. They have a lot of football talent in this state and this city. Cantwell now on third down. He's got Chichester and the big fellow stretching for the end zone and he scores. Touchdown Louisville. Good decision to give up basketball for <laughs> Chichester. His third catch, first touchdown of the night as Cantwell found it. The depth may not be as good, but the fan depth is great. Great crowd, filled house. But they don't seem to be able to attract great athletes like this. Mark. They always do. And look at Chichester, they're finishing the play. If he's five foot ten, he doesn't get in the he doesn't get in there. Six foot eight, he gets into the score. Amazing. Remember that 14 play drive that came up empty? Uh -huh. This time 14 plays, 80 yards, and Josh Chichester finishes it off with a touchdown grab from Cantwell. Just under 10 minutes to go in the second quarter, and we are tied at seven. The Crab Trap, the total Florida fun, seafood eating, crab leg crunching, dining out extravaganza. Sit right by the beach, exactly where you want to be. The kids can play on the playground, call them when the seafood arrives, and it's the best and tastiest seafood around. Have a seat and we'll pile it up right in front of you. Now get cracking. Raw oysters, crab dip, shrimp in all sizes, fresh fish, pasta, and of course, the crab legs. It's the Crab Trap, the kind of food and fun that made Florida famous. There's the man who evened the score, Josh Chichester, wide receiver from the Cardinals. Kansas State and Louisville got a good one brewing here in the Ville tonight. You see Hunter Cantwell, the man who delivered the pass. This is a, a buzz with excitement here in Louisville and getting cranked up with the Ryder Cup. Chad Campbell leading off the lineup, Mike. Yep, uh, out of UNLV, when not playing his best captain's pick. I think he will be a good head. Stuart Sick, one of the experienced guys, very good golfer at Georgia Tech, college golfer of the year. Ben Curtis from the state of Ohio and Kent State won the Open Championship a few years ago. Jim Furyk, very solid American, past U.S. Open champ. J.B. Holmes, one of the rookies, but a Kentucky guy, and they are going to wow the crowd. I think you're going to hear them fired up. And Anthony Kim may be the best ball striker on the PGA Tour. Very young, very talented. Phil Pine puts his foot into the kickoff. 
Aubrey Quarles returning for Kansas State. Looking for a little seam, but he's not going to find it as he's dragged down just across the 20 yard line by Daniel Covington of Louisville. The rest of the lineup for the Americans this weekend, Mike. Justin Leonard, the big putt in 99. He's never won a Ryder Cup match. 0 2 and 1 in his Ryder Cup career in the matches. So he's one of the veterans with experience. You have six rookies total. Hunter Mahan played great golf at Oklahoma State. Always a terrific program. Phil Mickelson, the most experienced guy. Record hasn't been good the last couple of Ryder Cups. Kenny Perry, another Kentucky guy, said this was his goal to make this team this year. Steve Stricker from Wisconsin, who went to college at Illinois. And Boo Weekly, who's just uh, loving him up in the media room. Boo, when he opens his mouth, a great quote follows. An absolute <laughs> pearl from Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. I don't believe we've had their highlights on college football final this year. <laughs> Freeman throwing and leaving it well short of Banks, who was wide open in the middle of the field. But I know in the unlikely event that Abraham Baldwin has a great performance, a helmet sticker awaits them late Saturday <laughs> night. Speaking of which. Hey, look at this. We've got Scott Van Pelt and Andy North here for the Ryder Cup, and I'm not sure they can focus on golf after what their respective alma maters did this weekend, uh, Maryland and Wisconsin. Are you guys locked in on what you're supposed to be doing, Scotty? Absolutely, Reese. I mean, look, for Friday, we're, we're on early, eight bells. Uh, we'll have a preview show at 7 o'clock in the morning. So Friday we'll be locked in. Saturday we'll do our lever best. I think Wisconsin's got a off bye week. we got an off week. And Maryland's got Eastern Michigan, but I respect the Mac, but I mean, I'll focus on golf. <laughs> okay. I think Andy should continue to celebrate the win over Fresno State, and certainly uh, Maryland's win over Cal this weekend was totally unexpected. Well, I know those guys going to be locked in on the well, Reece, white ball. you know better than anybody. You don't just walk into the snake pit known as Bird <laughs> Stadium and walk out with a victory. How many times have I told you that over the years? Yeah, Middle Tennessee understands that. <laughs> hey, Maryland learned, Red. Walking into Murfreesboro is no easy game, Lou. <laughs> they made a mistake. They overlooked them. <laughs> now, perhaps hit the snooze button, but Maryland hit him right in the mouth, just like Louisville is trying to do to Kansas State right now. Third and nine. A little underneath pass, and Banks has some help, and he's got great speed. First down, but there is a flag. That was thrown just near where the play came to an end. Kansas State has done a couple of times tonight a penalty bringing back a big play. And this time it was on their fine center, Jordan Bedore. Now, Andy, uh, I, I know you can see this now. This is Kansas State head is that coach Charles Ron Prince. Barkley? <laughs> <laughs> that's Ron Prince. What, what do you guys think of, of the of the form? I'll let Andy handle I'm this. I'm trying to yeah. figure out if that's his backswing or his forward <laughs> But as, as Coach Holtz will tell you, that's all these guys do all summer long. Once they've got their studs on campus, they just play golf all summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not, not me. Oh, I never on. played. Hey, when, yeah. you, when you get to be a head coach, the assistants do all the work anyway. So. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's cool. You're going to take that? <laughs> Freeman's pass incomplete with Darius Thomas with the deflection. So on the third and 13, K-State going to have to punt it away, Stoner. Hey, I, I was just hoping to be included in this conversation. I'm feeling a little left out. How you guys doing? Boy, I actually talked to Coach Prince, asked him his handicap, 18-19. I asked him to describe a swing. He said flat, not as bad as Barkley, but he watches too much of the uh, the natural golf swing oh, late oh, night in commercials. All you need to know is Chris Berman uses the natural golf Yeah, that's golf what he yeah. said. It, it's a golf swing yeah. for offensive line. And then one last thing. <laughs> I used to be a production assistant for Mike Tirico. I used to cut highlights for him. I roll prompter for him. He walked right by me today like I was a soccer ghost. It was outrageous, Tirico. <laughs> You're better than that. Monday Night Football host, <laughs> he's so man. He's big time. He's it's the ridiculous. face of the network. It's, uh, you can hang out with us. We're, right. we're, we're going to okay. go up Who, who are you again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One for me. Straight we go. <laughs> and on that uh, note. I, I, feel, I feel compelled to take up for Mike because when Mike showed up at the booth, he, he came bearing gifts, right? Because Thank you. I was, I was the water. stage manager. I brought water yes. to both Mr. Bay <laughs> and Mr. Davis. And I watched yes. your Houston Dynamo stuff. Oh, yeah. That's How about uh, this guy, Luke? Kent, uh, that's my it's fellow Ken Spader. Not only that, he lives next to me at uh, Lake Nona. We've had dinner together. We've got a lovely wife, great family. Uh, golden flashes. The captain. 1998 to 2000. Penn State golf team, Louisville taking over. Cantwell throwing it complete. Guess who? Having a huge night. Chichester, another first down. North just throws his hands up in the air, Reese. We got down here on the field. He's about 6'8", and Andy's screaming, throw him the ball. <laughs> 
It's worked out pretty well, Scott. He's got four catches for 55 yards so far. It's amazing. We have a six foot eight receiver on one side, the five seven receiver, and maximum on the other. And yet they're the two leading receivers. And let me, the little five seven guy like you, Coach Rose, let me point out to those two tall guys, North and Van Pelt, on the field, each has scored here tonight. Six eight, five seven. <laughs> as long as your feet touch the ground, you're okay. That's it. Bowling trying to get the corner. He cuts it up inside and gets down about the 41 yard line. It'll be a pickup of about four before Chris Carney was there to make the stop. A little over seven minutes to play here. Uh, Scott, Andy, what are you guys looking forward to? We talked a little bit about the pressure on the Americans to, to try to recapture the Ryder Cup. What are you looking forward to the most? I think they, the Americans love the fact that they're the underdogs and get out there and, and maybe be a little freer than they've been the last few years and have some fun playing. And uh, I think it's going to be real important if our guys can get off to a, our guys. If the Americans can get off to a good start <laughs> on Friday, put a little pressure on the Europeans, and maybe they'll, they'll put a lot of pressure on them. RD, the one thing I would say is in sport, I don't care if it's golf or the NFL or any sport that we look at, Anytime something can't possibly happen, it tends to happen. And the United States are viewed as a, as a prohibitive underdog in this. But I think they've got enough gutty, lunch pail type of guys that maybe they band together better, knowing they don't have Tiger. They've, they've got to, you, they've got to find some unity. They've got to find some, uh, some friendship. You know what I mean? I think, I think the Europeans have fun. And if this team can just have some fun, get off to a good start Friday, maybe they'll have some fun Sunday night. I think they better putt well. Mm -hmm. That never hurts. Third down. Lots of oh. contact over on the side. And Moore and Beaumont got tangled up, and Chai Chester was out there. Reggie Walker is in there applying some pressure. And it'll be fourth down and six. First. Saw the uh, decided edge that uh, the Europeans, from a record standpoint, have on the American players in Ryder Cup competition. That it's means nothing going into the mar. I tell mean, them, it coach. starts all over. It's a new team, new world. Louisville, and he set to punt it away. Signaling for the fair catch, and making it is Dion Murphy, and Kansas State will take over. Guys, we're looking forward to the Ryder Cup coverage coming up on Friday. Hope you guys enjoy yourselves out there at Valhalla and also here at the rest of the game tonight. We, we will. Go. Hang around for the game, yes, absolutely. 7 in the morning Friday. We'll see you guys then. Thanks, All right, Mike. Thanks, Mike, Thanks, Mike, Mike Rico, Scott Van Pelt, and Andy North. They'll be anchoring the Ryder Cup coverage. College Football Primetime, brought to you by ExxonMobil, taking on the world's toughest energy challenges, and ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. Missed beautiful Valhalla, where the Ryder Cup will be this weekend, about 19 miles away from where we are at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, Mark May, Rob Stone with you. Kansas State and the Cardinals tied at seven. Josh Freeman going back to pass again. And all kinds of pressure, but the big fella got loose and finds Brandon Banks and gets across the 20-yard line. That's what a six foot six, 250 pound powerful quarterback can give you. A lot of times when defenders think that they have him wrapped up, they don't because of the strength that he has in his lower body, coach. Boy, not only that, he held on to that football. You see that hit with his arm coming up. Great play, incredible. And what a heady play of rolling out and finishing the play and completing it to your receiver. What a linebacker who came. LD Scott was the one providing the big hit. Earl Heyman telling us yesterday that, that Freeman reminded him of a Jamarcus Russell type, and that play was very reminiscent of ones that we saw Jamarcus make at LSU. Just a little over five minutes of game time away from halftime. Let's check in with John Saunders. I thought they were going to encourage anybody to leave your game. I wouldn't do that. But if you're in the mood for baseball, the Brewers are facing the Cubs over on ESPN. Of course, the Brewers have ceded to the Cubs. Nine back now, but they're just a half game behind the Mets in the wild card race. Important game for them. Reese. All right, John. Third down now for Kansas State. They have leaned heavily to the pass. Freeman throwing again, and Kansas State's going to have the first down. The quick slant look in again to Brandon Banks. 22 plays, 
17 of them passes, actually 18 called passes, because one of the runs was a Freeman scramble. And there is a little bit of a scramble for the National League wildcard position. The Mets have been swooning, as they did last September, holding a half-game lead over Milwaukee at the moment. Houston trying to hang in there. Houston's really playing well, but to move their game to Milwaukee to play the Cubs isn't real fair. And there were uh, quite a few Cubs fans in the stands as Freeman throws again. The ball is batted into the air. And back there applying the pressure was Rodney Nat, the 6'3 sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, Freeman, this guy has really helped Josh Freeman. It's Warren Ruggiero. He's a quarterback guru. He says that uh, he has a pretty firm idea of how to help develop a quarterback. And Ron Prince and Josh Freeman talking to us have sung his praises about improving Freeman's platform, the way the ball comes out, a lot of the mechanics that are, could make Freeman one of the premier quarterbacks in the country this year as they run the draw play to Keith and Valentine. And his feet are a lot better this year. He's not as nervous in the pocket. He's a lot calmer. Not only that, Ron Prince, when he spoke to us, he said he's more like the horse whisperer. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what he kind he's of needs. Not, he, he not a screamer. He's got that get calming effect on him. And Josh Freeman's really reacting to him. What impressed me is the first time he met with Josh, he gave him 25 rules that he wanted him to follow. He set the tempo. Following those rules well enough for 12 completions tonight, 502 for his career. He passes Lynn Dickey, the career lead in Kansas State history. Edwin is picked off. Woody Terrain on the tip drill, and Josh Freeman, who came into the game, had not thrown a pick in 125 passes. One, number 144 goes the other way, and Louisville's in business. In two and a half games, that's their third fumble recovery and their third interception mark, and the defense scored two touchdowns already this year. Well, Coach, I wouldn't put this on the quarterback. If you're a receiver coming across, you've got to catch that ball. Deion Murphy needs to concentrate, go up with two hands, not one hand, and tip the ball in the air because it's a tip drill. If he tips it with one hand, there's going to be defenders behind him to intercept it. I agree with you. I wasn't putting the blame on the quarterback, but it's the fact that the defense made a great play by going to the football, and that's what Ron English has instilled in this defense in a short period of time. Oh, definitely. Heady defenders paying attention to what's going on. They're more attentive this year under Ron English. First pick of the year, as I said. The player down for Louisville is Richard Raglan, the defensive back. And he is up on his knees. Certainly we hope that the senior from Atlanta is okay. Obviously, a bit of discomfort there. A couple of his teammates looking on. And Freeman having a quick chat with Warren Ruggiero, the quarterback coach. There is Raglan. Who was shaking up on the play? We'll give him an opportunity to uh, recover. We'll be back right after this. The studio coming up on the Olive Garden halftime report. Kirk Herbstreit will break down the college football weekend. We'll hear from your Ryder Cup captain as well as Mike Tirico, and we'll look at Major League Baseball scores. Update you on how they're winding up in the pennant races. All coming up in the Olive Garden halftime report. Reese, back to you. All right, John, we'll see you then after the turnover. Josh Freeman's first interception and 144 passes dating to last year. Louisville's in business with the ball for Kansas State 27. With the ball and meeting a crowd in the backfield is Bilal Powell. As you know, for the past week or so, really dating back to last Friday night, we've had several matchups between the Big East and Big 12. South Florida and Kansas started it. This one tonight. Got two more coming up, mm -hmm. including uh, West Virginia and Colorado. It's always the argument over conference supremacy. And as slow a start as the Big East got off to in the first couple of weeks of the season, that could enhance their credibility with uh, with some of these wins if uh, if they could follow up what South Florida's been able to do. Well, they've got to get the job done. That's that's the most important thing. And I think a big game's going to be that West Virginia-Colorado game besides this game this week against the Big East. Oh, fake one way and pitch the other way. And Anderson's got it. Victor Anderson.
Wilson, the freshman from here in Louisville, has put the Cardinals on top. This is a great move. He beat the tackler one on one, outran one, and gave the other one a little bit of a move. See a misdirection play here. What a great move, Mark. It's a terrific job of running through tackles, Coach, for a freshman, getting to the perimeter and using your speed. And they did need an offensive lineman to do it. <laughs> After the turnover, two plays, 27 yards. Phil Putts wasn't pretty, but he knocks the extra point through, and Anderson has his second touchdown of the season and of his career as he beat Antonio. Felder on the corner. And coach, it was a misdirection going right that froze the linebackers, but right here it's just Victor Anderson running through tacklers and staying upright and using his power along with his speed. That's why he rushed for over 100 yards last week. Cheatham had a shot at him. He knifed between Felder, Cheatham on his way to the end zone. The men in black have taken the lead. And he's only five foot nine. <laughs> are, are you uh are you making the case for uh, uh, height challenge, vertically challenged people <laughs> making big plays here? <laughs> Victor Anderson off to a great start. You get more and more carries for Louisville. Don't forget, we've got plenty of great college football action coming your way this weekend. We talked about West Virginia and Colorado tomorrow night. Uh, an exciting young player for Baylor, Robert Griffin, goes against UConn on Friday night for those. Big East, Big 12 matchup. Sort of like a Big East, Big 12, Big 12 matchup uh, in football like they do the Big East or the, and the ACC, ACC and the Big 10 in basketball. I know, you're That's always great. talking about basketball. Oh, you love basketball. I do love basketball. <laughs> love football, too. Ball's rolling around, and Quarles is going to pick it up, trying to find the seam, but he's not going to make it back to the 20-yard line, so... With 2.49 to go in the first half, Kansas State down a touchdown will put him in play deep in their own territory. Saturday night on ABC, no Sean Marino and the Dogs head west for the first time in more than a generation and try to remain unbeaten against an Arizona State squad, clearly wounded after the overtime loss against UNLV. That's Harry Dog celebrating with Mohamed Massaqua apparently in the end zone. Uh, who do you like, Harry Animated Dog version. or Oga? I prefer Ugga because he's the real thing. There you go. Saturday night football presented by Southwest Airlines. ABC Saturday night, 8 Eastern time. As you can see, the dogs started the season ranked number one in the land. They've fallen to number three, but still unbeaten. An opportunity to get a big non-conference win. Freeman on first down, firing to the outside, and he couldn't make connection with Aubrey Quarles. Terrain, who made the interception, was on the coverage. Now, guys, this is what we're looking forward to this weekend. We'll work our way toward college football final late on Saturday night. Top two teams in the land are off. An embarrassing weekend for the Pac-10. Mm -hmm. and They could save some face if Arizona State could knock off the dogs. But embarrassing for the Pac-10, but a big weekend for the Mountain West Conference. Very true. And we'll have the SEC statement game for you from Auburn. LSU and Auburn College game day will be there. And, of course, Notre Dame and Michigan State as well. Valentine stretched to the outside, and that Ron English defense is now inspired. Antoine Kennedy, junior college transfer for Louisville, out there to make the stop. You got plenty of help from Adrian Green. Well, Louisville was only giving up 1.7 yards per rush, and Kansas State's not even averaging that if you take away the quarterback scrambles, Mark. And they've got to get the job done up front and establish the run in this game because that will help their play action pass, but they were so efficient at it early in this game. Valentine has carried it five times for a mere eight yards. Kansas State and all with just nine yards rushing, and Freeman's going to throw it again. He'll throw it underneath, looking for a block on the screen. They're not going to come up with enough for the first down. Stop just short. Aubrey Quarles made the catch on the screen, and Louisville's going to call a timeout. 157 remaining to go in the half. Louisville offense, who which has now found its stride a little bit. Took advantage of the turnover, had a good touchdown drive, an opportunity perhaps to get some more before halftime. Well, the one thing that uh, Kansas State's going to have to do, they're going to have to mix up their coverages. They've been playing man coverages. Cantrell's made some great throws. If they mix up and play some zone mark, they may get a turnover. I think this game is a lot about emotion. I think right now when you're looking at Louisville, they've got the emotion. They've got the momentum at this point of the game. Ron English's defense has done a terrific job against this Kansas State offense, eliminating big plays after that big play early. And I think right now they've got an opportunity. If they put points on the board before halftime, that'll put a lot of pressure on Kansas State in the second half. There's a big difference between being up one score and being up two. If they can even get a field goal, it's a great momentum. 
And Kansas State is going to fake the punt. And they'll convert. Tyson Hartman, the freshman, took the snap, converted, and they'll keep Louisville's offense off the field. You talk about a Woo! gutsy call in your own territory. That call at this point of the game by Ron Prince, that's huge. You know, I... Uh, I mentioned we're going to see Auburn and LSU this weekend. They call Tommy Tuberville the riverboat gambler. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see a bigger gamble than that. And the hat's not a gambler on fourth down? And, and, and that's the hat, you're right. Point well taken. Hey, but you go and you grab your special team coach. Rule number one, no fake can ever be successful, ever. But it happens. You mean on the punt return team? On any, uh, yeah. It was pretty uh, successful for Kansas State. Yeah, but it, it should be. First thing you do, you stop the fake. So now Kansas State with an opportunity to get something before the half, and it's another interception right into Woodley Terrain. Second should've, pick of the night. Should have punted the ball. They punted the ball that had him backed up, Mark. I don't know about punting the ball, but that's Josh Freeman, the quarterback, rolling to his left, throwing with his right hand. But the key is he tried to put this ball behind one defender in front of the other defender, didn't have enough air on the football. Check him out, rolling left, rolling right. And right there, that's a terrific play by the Louisville defense. Yeah, it was great because Louisville had been playing some man. They switched it up, played a squat corner. Great play. Credit. Credit Ron English. Terrain is a guy who came to Louisville last year as a junior college transfer. Some people believe that he was the number one junior college cornerback in the country. He was beaten for the game-winning touchdown play late in the game against Kentucky. He was smoked by Syracuse, lost his job, but Louisville coaches now believe that he's playing his best football. Obviously, tonight he is, but even coming into the game, the best he's played since he arrived on campus here at Louisville, and he's come up with a couple of picks of Josh Freeman in the second quarter. And he's getting the job done not only defending but also tackling. He's second on the team in tackles coming into the game and making a big play there. That's huge for Louisville. Johnny Burns, the tight end, is the man who's down. He had a big catch on a drive a little bit later on. So Kansas State, which had things going for a while on the last three drives, a punt and two interceptions. Well, both these teams have an awful lot of junior college players. And I don't think the average fan realizes how difficult it is to go to junior college, Mark. You don't have academic counselors because of financial restraints. You mm -hmm. don't have trading table. You've got to fend on your own. You've got to do all these things. And when an individual goes and plays junior college, you know he loves it, and he's really made a sacrifice to be able to get on a major college level. So I congratulate those people. Some people look down on junior college players, but I say God bless you. I'm glad to see Burns up and on his feet as Freeman started off hot but has hit a bit of a trouble pass here against this Ron English defense in the second corner as you see Burns, the 6'3", 245-pound senior trotting off. When somebody lays down and he gets up and trots off, and that doesn't happen. If you're down on that field, you better have a broken leg, or if I get there, you're going to need an ambulance by the time. Get up off the field, come over to the sideline. That's all. Come on, Coach. Have a little sympathy. Hey, Sometimes sympathy, the guy's like knocked God. out. He's hey, got the wind knocked out of him. It's a football home. game. You have pads. It's not playing patsies. The compassionate Lou Holtz. <laughs> Oh, what a hit. Powell wow. sticking it up, trying to get close to the 50-yard line. Big hits in for Kansas State, and the clock is winding. And close to a minute to go in the first half. It's a third down now. We'll see what Louisville's going to do as the clock is now inside a minute. And Cantwell has hit 11 of 18 passes for 127 yards in the first half. And crowd getting a little anxious, wanting to see Louisville at least try with something else on the board. Cantwell rushes coming from the outside. He's firing it and making the catch is Chris Vaughn, the transfer from Notre Dame. He makes the grab at the 40-yard line for the first down. He had good coaching. <laughs> first down for Vaughn. Cantwell again. Clock now half a minute. He's got his tight end. Nocta. Nocta puts the football on the ground. It's loose. Kansas State had it for a moment, but I'm not sure if they came up with it. Louisville able to retain possession, and they were most fortunate. Now they did not get a first down. The clock was winding, and now it is stopped again with 19 seconds to play. That is a terrific hit by the defender, Coach. How in the world did he get the ball back? Mark, how did he get the ball back? Look how far away it was. Nothing but white shirts and purple pants and 
You got it back. Timeout. Louisville. For second timeout. 30 seconds. So now on a second down and two. Louisville trying to get some more points just before the half. We'll see if they do it when you come back. Back in Louisville, 19 seconds to go in the first half. The Cardinals with a 14-7 lead on Kansas State. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, Mark May, and Rob Stone with you. Three Kansas State turnovers in the first half have greatly hindered the Wildcats' efforts and given Louisville some life. The latest, an interception thrown by Josh Freeman that has Louisville in position, perhaps, to get more points before halftime. Let's give credit to Jeff Brom, the offensive coordinator. This first year has been the offensive coordinator. He's mixing his plays up very well. And Brom calling plays from the press box now. The first week against Kentucky, he worked from the field. Brom upstairs, and, and he was very candid in talking to us yesterday, saying that his inexperience as, a, as an every-down play caller, perhaps uh, the best place for him to be was up top. Could see the leverage of the secondary a little bit better and perhaps give his offense a better, uh, a better opportunity to succeed. Trust me, it's hard to say on this. 12 on the field at Kansas State. Five yard penalty. Second down, we've had an illegal substitution penalty tonight. This one giving Louisville a first down. Still 19 seconds to go, and there's Jeff Brown. Well, this time it was on the defense. Trust me, it's hard to see on the sideline. On the sideline, all you see are the two ends come together. Say that again. Well, the two ends, you can't see anything. Can't the, see two or the, the two end men on the line of scrimmage come together, you can't see anything. Brom has moved up top and making his calls from there. Been very effective for the Cardinals so far in the first half. And Cantwell wanting more. Firing. He's got a man. It's Beaumont. And Beaumont dances out of bounds to stop the clock with 14 seconds to go. It'll be another first down for the Cardinals. And now, now they can take a couple of shots at the end zone. They definitely can. But what a sweet throw by Hunter Cantwell, Coach. Putting that one right over the cornerback. Dropping the ball right in exactly where it had to be. If they stay in man coverage, they can't stop them. And I'll tell you right now, watch out for the slant. The same thing they've hit the last couple of times. But this is a perfect throw. It's right on the money. Only where his receiver could get the ball. Well, that's what you tried to do. That's your purpose. Well, most of the time. Yeah. Well, sometimes yeah. that's, that's the interceptions right. that we've seen this first half. You're, you're right, but it doesn't always happen. And now 14 seconds to go in the half. Campwell has a timeout to work. Oh. There's a slant from Chichester, who's had a huge first half. Let it slip away. He had six. Well, you knew it was going to come. I knew it, and they knew it. That's the, the nature of that defense. That's the best play you can throw. And it was a great route. Terrific throw put it there, but it was a tremendous job by the defender of stripping it. But I'm still going back to a six foot eight receiver, particularly in the red zone. I want the ball up high where only he is going to come down. Oh, no, 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 no. You want to get that down low where you can catch it with your body. In there. He's six eight. Hey, you put it up, the guy can pull your arms down, Mark. Lou, he can eat popcorn off the heads of most of those defensive backs out there. <laughs> That's not the purpose of the game, Mark. You don't eat popcorn. You, you do that up here. You eat popcorn, drink coats, eat hot dogs. Down there, you got to take away the inside on the slant, and Kansas State had difficulty doing it. Kansas State calling timeout here with 11 seconds to go in the first half as Tim Tibisar tries to get his defense back together. Here's what's happened in the first half. Josh Freeman got things started. A laser beam down the middle to the diminutive Brandon Banks, but Hunter Cantwell had an answer. Almost the same play we just saw a couple seconds ago to Josh Chichester. The 6'8 kid put it into the end zone, and then the redshirt freshman Victor Anderson slipped a couple of tackles and danced in for the Louisville touchdown, and that is where we stand right now, 14-7. This latest opportunity for the Cardinals created by a second Josh Freeman interception in the first half. Here's the quarterback comparison between the two. Almost an identical mm -hmm. completion percentage. However, the big difference, the two picks that Freeman has thrown and has Louisville on the doorstep. Cantwell toward the end zone, and Chichester had it in his hands again, and Cheatham was on the coverage. He was beaten, and Chichester couldn't pull it down. Well, you say to the quarterback, we have three points on the board. Don't take them off the turnover, and he's doing a good job of protecting the ball, referring to the quarterback, Mark. That was a terrific job by Cheatham covering on that play. If that ball's about another foot higher, it's a touchdown. Okay, now, guys, six seconds remaining. Third down and ten. you got to make sure make sure that it's quickly thrown so you don't miss the opportunity for three. It's got to be a slant. It might be a fade, which you saw in the last two plays. 
uh, but you don't want to put too much arch on it or it's going to take six seconds. I always felt if you had seven, you could throw a fade from inside to 15 or you could throw a slant inside seven. Six, you're getting a little precarious. Well, Louisville, should be pointed out, just used his final timeout. Probably wouldn't have had time to run a play in the field and call the timeout anyway, but even if they did, that option is now gone. Well, you're going to throw it to the end zone. I mean, you're right. going to throw a short pass. Well, of course not, but I'm saying in the in the event that it happened that way, they have no opportunity. But the last two passes, Mark, should have been completed. They were dropped, which can happen. I think they're going to kick the field goal. Obviously, uh, it's a very good move because you see the receivers out of the game. Ty Chester a little bit frustrated. He had a great start. He's caught four passes for 55 yards, but would like to have those two back. So it now will be a 31-yard field goal attempt, or maybe 32. They spotted just inside the 22. 31 officially for Chris Philpott, the freshman who replaces the great Art Carmody. It's one of two on the year. Long has been 19, and Philpott misses. Well, the opportunity for the Cardinals goes awry as the young kicker misses the field goal opportunity and Chichester thinking about a couple of balls that got away. And let's check in now with Rob Stone who's down on the field with the Louisville head coach. Well, coach, take me through the internal conversation you had on whether to go for it or kick that field goal. Well, I just felt like we needed to kick it. Had we been a little bit closer, we would have taken a shot at the end zone. We took two shots at the end zone. Had chances. Hunter put the ball in good position. We just got to come up with those plays. But at that point in time, we wanted to try to get points on the board. Obviously, we didn't, but I'd make the same decision again. How do you deal with Chichester in the locker room after those two drops? Oh, he's fine. He's made a lot of plays tonight. You know, and he'll come back and make more plays in the second half. He's done some great things for us, and, and he'll bounce right back. I'm confident of that. Coach, appreciate you Thanks, Thank you. All right, Rob and Steve Craig Thorpe, a missed opportunity for Louisville, and perhaps an opportunity for Louisville missed is one gained for Kansas State as they dodge potential disaster. Let's go back to the studio now for the Olive Garden halftime report. Presented by Jack Links, Louisville and Kansas State. Cardinals here at home just about to start the third quarter, ahead 14 to 7. Missed an opportunity late in the half to build that lead. Reese Davis along with my Hall of Fame running mates, Lou Holtz and Mark May. Rob Stone's down on the sideline, and he ought to be a Hall of Famer too, by the way, <laughs> and sideline reporters. Uh, guys, Kansas State got off to a razor-sharp start in the passing game. Josh Freeman was excellent through an early touchdown pass. Things sort of turned on them. What can the Wildcats do, Mark, to get things going in the right direction in the second half? Well, first and foremost, protect the football. They've given the ball away three times, and they haven't come up with a turnover. The other thing is they have to establish the run in the first half. Nine rushes, just 17 yards. Well, I think that uh, Freeman has played very, very well. He threw the two interceptions, but one of them was a deflection. Mm -hmm. The main thing is they're not getting real good football position. They're just getting them 70, 80 yards away, and I think the fact that uh, they just need to get some big plays, they'll be fine. Freeman hit 8 of 11 in the first quarter, but in the second quarter, just 5 of 11 for 28 yards through a couple of interceptions in the second quarter. The one that Coach mentioned off the deflection. The touchdown pass came with just a few seconds remaining in the first quarter, and it is the lone score for the Wildcats in the game thus far, and they will be kicking it away to Louisville to start the second half. Rossman puts a foot into it and drives it deep into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and the Cardinals will start on their own 20-yard line. Rob Stone caught up with the Kansas State head coach just a little while ago. Well, Coach, how'd you dress your quarterback in the halftime locker room? Well, I told our team that we played about as bad as you can play in a half, and, and we're down by seven on the road. We got to defend this opening kickoff here, and I, and I know our guy's going to come around. He'll do fine. Uh, we just stop missing tackles and run the ball a little better, and we'll be just fine. Coach, appreciate your time. Thank you. You know, there is another thing that Ron Prince can take as some solace from that second quarter, which was a struggle, and that was Louisville missed myriad opportunities. They had three red zone trips, only scored one touchdown. Another time, a 14-yard or 14-play drive was stopped on downs when Brock Bowen was stopped for less than a one-yard gain, something that Kansas State could not do on that occasion. First carry of the second half, and he gets a first down. Well, that's not real good when that happens on the first play of the second half. And first half, Louisville was able to run the ball for 91 yards. Pretty good balance. Not much balance at all for Kansas State, but the, the biggest difference, the three turnovers that you alluded to, Mark. That's it, the difference in the game right now. It definitely is. You can't turn the ball over and expect to win. They're going to have to play a brilliant second half and protect the football if they want to win this game. Here is Bowen again, shaking tacklers and still on his feet near midfield. A 
good tough run by the big senior from Germantown, Ohio. Coach, you've got to love this downhill smash mouth. Six foot, 238 pound running back, just hitting the hole using his leverage. Well, you're going to say there are at least three missed tackles. Look at number 43 coming in there, missing them. But right here again, they don't wrap them up. But you can't, you can't arm tackle a guy that's built that low to the ground and that powerful. I never taught arm tackle. <laughs> now, we did it sometimes, <laughs> but I didn't teach it. Ula sure Pamelli was the guy who missed the tackle, and now after play action, he finds his tight end, does Hunter Cantwell, Pete Nocta, getting into Kansas State territory, and the Cardinals picking up where they left off late in the first half on the move again in the first minute and change of the second half. When you run the football, that's when play action passing becomes very, very effective, as you can see here. This is a different football team, Mark, than what I saw against Kentucky. Oh, they're Tennessee. physical. I, I, I totally agree with you. I think they got their confidence built up against Tennessee Tech, and I think that was huge coming in this game. They've got a rhythm offensively. Campwell, give it to Bowen again, and Bowen's got five, and it's inside the 35-yard line before he swarmed under. But that, that Louisville offensive line mm -hmm. is coming off the ball. And they're missing a couple of starters. George Bussey, Mark Wetterer, normal starters, not in the lineup. And still, they've been able to run the ball. That's both those guys on the left side scored their touchdown and run around the left side. And you see the difference. Uh, they turned the ball over. The majority of those four Cantwell turnovers in the fourth quarter when it was desperation time against Kentucky. But still, five turnovers in that game as well. Let's also remember, though, what a fine job Ron Prince, has, uh, Ron English has done as far as forcing turnovers in the first two games of that. Blitz coming on Cantwell. He stands in and delivers the football, and Beaumont has it for another first down. Knocked down at the 27-yard line. And since Acona was in there applying the pressure, Cantwell stood in and delivered it. I'm telling you, when you play him in man-to-man -man coverage, he is just too good. They need to mix up and play some zone and confuse them somewhat. Well, not only that, Coach, you've got a quarterback that has some experience and that is physically and mentally tough. He knows he's going to get hit right in the mouth with this pass. He stays in the pocket and competes it for the first time. Let's go back to the ground, and they do it again with Bowen. Bowen's got the edge, pushed out of bounds. At about the 15-yard line, Jeff Adams making the block that freed Bowen to rumble deeper into Kansas State territory. And what I really like about Bowen when he runs the ball, he knows where his cutoffs are by the offensive line. They're doing a fabulous job on the backside of cutting the defense off so he can cut the ball back and pick up positive yards. You're absolutely right, but I'll tell you everything that's helped Bowen is how well Victor Anderson ran at times. That motivates you also. Good one-two punch. Anderson scoring a touchdown in the first half. First down, the big fellas got it again. Bowen looking for the edge. This time, he's just going to pick up about one before Chris Carney was there to put the brakes on. Coach, I don't think that's his cup of tea, trying to stretch the defense and the offense. I think he's the type of guy that has to hit it down downhill, or he's got to use his cutback ability. But the one guy that we never give credit to is a fullback. Number 48, Joe Tronzo, is doing a tremendous job of blocking. He's the lead blocker there. He's not in the football game at the present time. Something that Jeff Brom told us yesterday that thought he shouldn't have done more of against Kentucky. Two back sets, now throwing to the end zone! Touchdown Louisville! Troy Paisley on the grab! Paisley is down in the back of the end zone after making a nice grab for the touchdown. He's being attended to. And Troy Paisley putting Louisville up 20 to 7. He's holding his knee. Obvious discomfort. Previous play will be reviewed. They're going to have a look at it to make sure that Paisley made the catch inbounds, controlled it all the way through, guys. Let's have a look at it. Cantwell put it right on him. That's six. Thank you. I believe, I believe it is, Mark. But going back to the play, that was a fabulous job by the offensive line of picking up the blitz, trading off defenders and making sure you get in front of the blitzing defender and passing defensive lineman down the keyboard. You saw there where his left leg got injured, mm -hmm. just where it 
hyperextended, hopefully. Paisley's second catch of the season, both of them have been for touchdowns, assuming that the ruling on the field is confirmed or upheld. Well, I'm up here and I'm confirming it. <laughs> But this is still a terrific job by Paisley with a defender all over him, going up for the ball and coming down with a touchdown reception. After review, ruling on the field stands, touchdown. So while they're still attending to Paisley in the lower leg, the ruling on the field gives the Cardinals a two touchdown lead with the extra point pending. And that was an impressive drive coming coming right out of the locker room and marching it down the field for Jeff Brom's offense. Boy, all the momentum was going Kansas State's way when they, uh, Louisville missed the field goal. Now, Kansas State has to answer, Mark. That's the one thing you preach as a coach. They score, you gotta come back out and answer. And not only that, how about the job that Steve Predford did at halftime? The halftime adjustments where they were gonna come out and establish the run, play action pass, and they just went from one end of the field to the other end and they score a touchdown. And Paisley's trying to run a little bit now. That, that, that really bothers me as a coach. I, I got to tell you, if you're hurt, then doggone it, you better be hurt. Get up and get off the field. That I've watched that three times tonight. Chris Philpott on to attempt the extra point. Coach, what if they think they're hurt? Well, if they're hurt, then they're hurt. And Philpott hits the upright, and the extra point is no good, and that potentially could loom large at the end of an eight-point. Back in Louisville, or Louisville, or Louisville, Louisville, Louisville. Been here a number of times for the Kentucky Derby basketball. Louisville, I think, is the preferred pronunciation by the locals. Louisville. Louisville. That's what I call it. Louisville. I think you're right on the money, Mayday. 20 to 7, Louisville on top of Kansas State. Josh Freeman and Hunter Cantwell, both big time, big arm pocket passers, put together solid nights. Though Freeman was early, Cantwell has been late. Cardinals have scored 20 consecutive points and they lead now by 13. Aubrey Qualls, a junior college transfer, has got a little room. He had the kicker, Tim Doherty, who slowed him down just enough. He's knocked out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. And now, the Wildcats behind Josh Freeman will have excellent field position. This is the way things went for Freeman early, firing a 45-yard dart to Brandon Banks. But then, also had the miscue, the miscommunication on the shotgun snap. He threw his first interception of 145 attempts and then followed it up with another one to Woodney Terrain, although the first one was off the deflection. Those three turnovers by Freeman aiding Louisville's cause, though the last drive was simply a case of Cardinals taking the kickoff and going to get it. And you want to answer, Freeman tries to, but excellent coverage on Murphy by Johnny Patrick. Freeman, as I mentioned, started off razor sharp, hit eight of his first 11 for 124 yards and a touchdown in the first quarter. But then in the second quarter, both of the picks and the completion percentage obviously suffered as well. Only 28 yards through the air. And Kansas State really, uh, Coach, hasn't been able to run it all, huh? No, they haven't even tried. But the one thing Louisville is doing is they are disrupting the rhythm. They're Boston, the receivers, throwing off their timing. Second and 10 after the incomplete pass. And they will try to run it this time. And Keith and Valentine still on his feet. And he'll get about five yards, maybe six. It'll bring up a third down. Johnny Patrick, who had the coverage on the previous play, makes the tackle this time. I think the way for Kansas State's offense to soften up this Louisville defense is to have quarterback Josh Freeman roll out with the ball and run. He's had a couple of opportunities if he pulls it down and runs with the ball to make some huge chunks of yardage easy. Freeman is somewhat mobile, but he says he sees himself as a pocket passer, so sometimes he is somewhat reluctant to run out of the pocket, but we have seen him on a couple of design runs. Freeman with a lot of traffic in the backfield tries to fit one into Quarles. Johnny Patrick again on the coverage in an excellent series for the Louisville cornerback. Well, unless the receivers can beat the defensive back man to man, he's going to have trouble because that's exactly what Louisville's doing now, Mark. They're playing man coverage and covering them like a glove. But it was a terrific job by Johnny Patrick, the cornerback, on that play. And he's had a great series, as you mentioned, Reese. But to stick to his man in that one-on-one -on -one coverage, it's not an easy task, but he got it done. Lou, you mentioned how desperately Kansas State needed to answer. Instead, they're going to go three and out after starting with great field position. They're going to follow it up with, with a pretty lousy punt. 
George Pearson, the junior from Arlington, Virginia, didn't get all of that one in. So Cardinals will be in business when you come back. Primetime, brought to you by the totally, completely, 100% new Mazda 6. In a city full of attractions, this is one of the most compelling. Muhammad Ali Center has been open just for a few years in the museum area in downtown Louisville. Many exhibits based on the greatest of all time's career. Muhammad Ali was here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium to support the team. Also looking toward the Ryder Cup as an ambassador for the city of Louisville. And Hunter Cantwell's first pass aimed at Doug Beaumont is incomplete. It'll be second and ten. And guys, after that short 27-yard punt, Kansas State went three and out. You, you get the feeling a lot of time left right now. This game's sort of teetering in the balance for the Wildcats at the moment. This is when you really earn your salary on the sideline as a coach. You're on the road. you got a packed house. They're loud. They're vocal. Everything's going against you. Now you need somebody to step up, up and make a play. Ron Prince, who's got a contract extension, 14 and 13 in his third year. You get the program going. He was going to have to recruit a lot of junior college kids this year, and he recruited 19 of them, 19 of the 32 signees that he had in his latest recruiting period, and he has eight or nine of them who are playing prominent roles already, and even more than that on the two deep out of the classes. They, they tried to get older and get some more experience after a, after a free fall at the end of last season that largely was caused by a lack of depth. You see Ron's background with Al Groh at Virginia. There. Now it's a third down for Louisville, an important one for K State. But while Powell got the inside handoff, and he's going to be well short in the first down. So Antoine Moore making the stop for the Wildcats, and a very important one at that. And that was, and this is a big series for K State, as we mentioned. But when they get the ball back, they've got to do something with it. And I still think when you've got a mobile quarterback that can make plays, it's all about getting first downs, moving the chains, and scoring now. They can't go back and drop back and expect, Coach, to go three plays in a row and pass the ball and expect to go down the field and score. And both teams are playing man coverage. You don't know how to be able to avoid that. And a booming punt off the foot of Corey Getchy. Drives Deion Murphy well back. Now Murphy's thrown it in reverse. Almost tackled inside his own 10. Now Murphy's got some running room. Deion Murphy is loose. He's going to go. Touchdown, Kansas State. No flags on the field. A remarkable return. Louisville's had trouble with special teams. And boy, that was a great effort by that young man, but also should never happen, Mark. Great effort. That was a spectacular effort. That may be <laughs> one of the plays of the season. Are you kidding, Coach? He probably would have been dropped for a 20-yard loss, but he's got the presence of mind of staying with the play, and the blockers on the special teams play, they stayed with their blocks. We should have expected it. That is the 20th non-offensive touchdown in this Ron Prince's third season. They have made a living on special teams. A pet of the coach, and just like that, Kansas State alive and right back in it at 20 to 14. An 86 yard punt return for a touchdown. The fifth, we had five punt returns for a touchdown last season. In fact, they were the only school in America last year to have five punt returns for a touchdown and one kickoff return. And this guy was a major reason why. And the one thing you tell the guy, don't ever regret. Don't go back to zero. Whoa, whoa, great move. <laughs> I guarantee you about five seconds ago, Ron Prince is saying, Dion, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it, Dion. You go, Dion. That's exactly how I coached you to do it. Dion Murphy was the Big 12 newcomer offensive player of the year. Largely because of his work on special teams, he did have 57 catches as well. And that was a huge play. They hit Kansas State back in it at 20 to 14. And he runs a 4 3 40 yard dash, which is flying, and he showed it on that play. Because once he took off and he got to the outside, there wasn't anyone close to him. You know, since 1999, only Virginia Tech and the vaunted Beamer Ball have had more non offensive touchdowns in Kansas State. It dates back to the Bill Snyder era, and Kansas State comes up with a big one here, Stoner. Hey, if you can't play special teams at Kansas State, you can't play, period. That's how important head coach Ron Prince puts on special teams. 
Ian Freeman telling us he takes such pride in the fact that he's on the punt block team. Even the quarterback, Josh Freeman, is in on the act. For the second consecutive season, he's on the all-hands team for those potential onside kicks. Coach Prince says, when you feel special teams are more important than the offense and defense, then you have a hungry and humble team. Sounds great and all, but do you really want your QB out there, guys? Yes. <laughs> I did. They got the best hands. They should be out there. Here's the kickoff, and running back in Kansas State a little bit fired up right now. Johnny Patrick returning to kickoff for Louisville and didn't quite make it back to his 20. And you have to put a hat on the kicker sometimes too, Coach. Oh, absolutely. You're going to see a real great block here. Here is Getchy and Getchy good. Ooh. <laughs> Antoine Moore <laughs> hit on a slow young man. That's part of it. But Getchy popped back up, didn't stay, didn't stay on the ground. No, he's he not supposed to. But you know that's a third touchdown that Louisville's given up this year without their defense being on the field. That's way too many. And a couple of fumbles returned for touchdowns in the opening game against Kentucky. Defense only gave up 13 points while they were on the field. One of those set up by miscue as well as we have whistle sounding and timeout. Timeout. And called by Louisville. Louisville, perhaps under the gun. First time out of the half. And a little bit confused on the sidelines. Frank Thorpe having to burn a timeout in a six-point game. Don't forget, more Big East, Big 12 matchups. And uh, I'll tell you, the way this one's stacking up, West Virginia and Colorado, they, they've got the bar set pretty high to live up to it tomorrow night. You can see it, college football primetime, presented by Applebee's as West Virginia tries to get the ship righted after the disaster at East Carolina. Colorado looking for a notch in its belt as Dan Hawkins continues to rebuild that program. 8.30 Eastern time for the Mountaineers and the Buffs, college football primetime. Presented by Applebee's. Here in Louisville, we have a 20 to 14 game. Cardinals marched the ball down the field on their opening possession of the second half. Kansas State appeared to be teetering, and just like that, lightning strikes with Deion Murphy's 86 yard punt return. And that's where we stand. Hunter Campwell firing a laser beam. And Beaumont had no choice but to catch it, probably stuck in his shoulder pads. Kevin Nagandi's back in the studio. How you doing, Kevin? Hey, Reese, want to remind our viewers over on ESPN right now, it's the Brewers, uh, you know, getting some breathing room right now, up 6-1, to one, big seventh inning over the Cubs right now over at Wrigley. Brewers a half a game back of the Mets in the wild card. Mets right now leading the Nationals 9-7 to seven in the bottom of the ninth inning. By the way, the Phillies beat the Braves 6-1. to one. Back to you guys. All right, Kevin. Second down and two. The redshirt freshman Anderson had a touchdown earlier in the game. Finds the sledding a little bit tougher in the middle of that K-State defensive line. Daniel Calvin in to make the stop. Backup nose tackle for the Wildcats. It'll bring up a third down. Ron Prince has always been a Rob Stone mentioned a proponent of special teams. One of the memorable images from last year is after uh, punt return for a touchdown against Texas. The high step dance that Prince did down the sideline in celebration, the Wildcats victory on the road against the Longhorns. Might do a little dancing if his defense could come up with a stop here. Cantwell, a little play action fake, and he's gonna go for it all. Beaumont's out there, and penalty flags are flying. And the aggressive play call is gonna pay off, I believe, Billy McClellan on the coverage and had to grab a handful of Beaumont to keep him from running free. Randy Smith going to make sure that everybody saw the same thing. Nice little play fake by Cantwell, sticking the ball behind his back. Holding six on the defense. Ten yard penalty, automatic first down. So it was Blair Irvin rather than McClellan who was flagged for it, but nonetheless, it will. Give the Cardinals the first down, and actually they said six, but it it's was McClellan. Yeah, it was, McClellan. It, yeah, it was not six. Poor Blair Irvin saying, "Hey, I just came back from baseball, and they're trying to put penalties on me. I'm not even over there." And the, and the thing is about Billy McClellan, he thought he got one, Reese, and you just <laughs> mentioned on national television it's, it wasn't him. <laughs> it was McClellan. Every time he's holding on 73, he's saying there's no such thing. <laughs> Anderson. 
good tough run getting up to the 44-yard line. Ula Pamelli makes the stop for Kansas State. And Coach, first down is so crucial for Louisville and for Kansas State because if Louisville's getting five-plus yards, they're dictating to the defense because from that point on, they really control the sticks. Absolutely, and they are controlling the line of scrimmage except on third down and two or three. Then they have trouble. But you got to remember this, Kansas State, both inside linebackers are junior college players, brand new for the first time. And a look at Jeff Brom, who's going the game from the press box. And the Louisville offense in sync. Former Cardinal quarterback and Anderson's loose again. Here is Victor Anderson. Victor Anderson is free. Touchdown Louisville. 56 yards. Not a not a bad night at all, is it? Oh, yeah. For Anderson, loose for the 56-yarder. He's an impressive back because he makes people miss in the secondary, but nice job blocking up front. He's carried his six times. He's over 100 yards. He's got two touchdowns. Nice spin move. And with the 12-point lead after the missed extra point, it appears the Cardinals are considering going for two. And we also have a player down on the field. It's the left guard, Josh Byram. And Byram is in the starting lineup for the Cardinals because Mark Wetterer, the normal starter at left guard, has a high ankle sprain and was unable to go tonight. Well, they're getting thin on the offensive line, particularly on the left side. An offensive lineman is probably the most difficult position to replace due to an injury because it's so intricate inside about all the calls you make, the timing, working with somebody, as you know better than I do, Mark. They've got a great leader up front in Eric Wood, and he's just an old blue-collar tough guy from the old school. He's playing with an injured PCL, posterior cruciate ligament injury. It's a knee ligament, and he's still out there hobbling around, but he's a tough guy. He's a leader of this bunch. Talking to some of the Kansas State coaching staff this afternoon, and they believe that Wood is as good a center as they've seen, believing that perhaps he is the best yeah. in America. And when I was on the field before the game, I spoke with Ron Prince, and he told me he thought he was better than Mangle, the center from the Jets that was drafted in the first round, and that's a pretty high compliment. But the other thing is, tonight's his 40th consecutive start. Now, that, that's, that, that's old school, Coach. When you're out there injured and, and limping around and you're still out there starting because you've got that pride factor that you want to help your team win, I, I agree with you completely. Isn't anything wrong with being old school, Mark? Byram thankfully walked off the field, and now the Cardinals are going to go for two to try to make it a 14-point lead. Cantwell firing the dart, and he's got it. Two-point conversion, Doug Beaumont. So wipe out the missed extra point on the kick, and the edge for the Cardinals now back to an even 14 points. Victor Anderson, the red shirt freshman from right here in Louisville. Six carries, 106 yards, 56 there to put the bill up by 14. Kid from San Xavier High School here in Louisville, rushed for over 4,000 yards as a high schooler. Victor Anderson, redshirt freshman, second straight game over 100 yards. He just went 56. The answer returned by Deion Murphy and give Louisville a 28-14 lead over Kansas State. Now it's Josh Freeman's turn to answer. Just over six minutes to go in the third quarter. The Kansas State offense has been largely stymied of late, but they'll get another opportunity. Tim Doherty set the kickoff for the Cardinals. Aubrey Quarrel is the deep man for Kansas State. Cantu just returned a punch for a touchdown, now returning the kickoff. Quarrel's looking for the outside, and there's a flag down. It looks for all the world like a block in the back. At any rate, it appears that Kansas State will be in the shadow of its own goalpost to start this drive. Randy Smith, the referee in the white hat. No foul on the play for an illegal block in the back. First down. So originally, thought there was a block in the back. They changed their mind. Our Jack <laughs> Links, wild play of the week. Buffalo and Temple. Buffalo was down four, but no, no one circles, circles the wagons, wagons like the, the Buffalo Bulls. Bulls. 
The Hail Mary on the final play of the game drew Willie to name in Roosevelt for the win and Buffalo under Turner Gill getting the 30 to 28 victory and that's your Jack Link's wild play of the week. We've got a few wild ones in this one as well. Freeman plenty of heat in the back. He finds his tight end and Darren Mastrud with the catch for a short game. Adrian Grady was right back there on top of Freeman as he tried to deliver the football. And it's going to be a pickup of maybe one. Boy, that's a very well-coached defense. And the one thing about Louisville, when you consider all the people they've lost, all the people that they've dismissed from the football team, you have to be impressed, Mark. Absolutely. Ron English has done a terrific job with this. In just one year, how he's turned this team around. Keeping it on the ground this time. Justin Woods, freshman from Shawnee, Kansas, is going to bring up a third down and long. You mentioned the uh, transformation that Louisville is undergoing under Steve Cragthorpe, the head coach, from the spring of 2007 to this past spring. Look at the number of players that they lost. Now, about twice as many as you would expect because you know that the guys are going to graduate, but they had nearly that many again dismissed or leaving for other reasons. He's tried to get a handle on the, uh, the type of discipline he wants to instill in the program. And it's, it's been a bit of a process for Louisville, but they're having a great night so far tonight. Freeman escapes tackle. There's a flag on the play. Freeman with a big collision with Daniel Covington. And there's a flag in the backfield, and it's a hold on Kansas State. And the Wildcats are going to be in a heap of trouble. I, I don't think he quite reached the first down marker. Holding, 75 on the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So now it'll be a fourth down since Freeman did not make it to the first down marker. Louisville opted to get the ball back, but you can see the strength of Josh Freeman here. Oh, and he just runs over the opponent. If you're a defensive back, you better lower your shoulder because you're going to get the ball delivered to you. That was big Maurice Mitchell that he shed in the backfield. Now Louisville has an opportunity to touch down lead, getting late in the third quarter to get the ball back in good field position. Beaumont moving back to his 35, and he muffs it. The ball's loose. And Louisville, very, very fortunate to fall on the ball. Johnny Patrick there to get on top of it after the muff by Beaumont. So we'll see Louisville come back on offense right after we check in with the Sports Center right now on Kevin Nagandi. Reese, we got football news after an 0-2 start. Vikings coach Brad Childress decided Wednesday to bench Tavares Jackson and go with backup Gus Farad. Childress named Farad the starter for the remainder of the season. Vikings play the Panthers on Sunday. Wizards all-star guard Gilbert Arenas had debris removed from his left knee Wednesday and will miss at least the first month of the season. Arenas told the Washington Post he plans to be back on the court in early December. Next Sports Center after the Cubs Brewers game on ESPN. Always stay current on ESPN News. Back to you guys. All right, Kevin, how, how old is Gus for what? 67? Man, look. Talk about uh, the need for quarterbacks uh, in the NFL, and Gus has been a fine one, but Gus is sort of reaching that Vinny Testaverde stage uh, of his career. He's getting another opportunity to start as Anderson snuffed out that time. And no little or no game, Hanson Zacona back to make the stop for the Wildcats. In fact, he's going to lose a yard. Don't count the years, make the years count. Doesn't matter how old you are, make them count. Wow. 14 yards in this corner versus 159 for Ruvo. Defense in black. Giving a lot of credit to Ron English, and he's earned it after seeing the offenses run through unimpeded last year. And this time, Rob Powell seemed to be stopped. He reversed his field and turned nothing into something. Uh, across the 30-yard line, and it's going to be just a couple of yards, maybe three, short of a first down. Gary Chandler kept that from being complete disaster for the Wildcats. Now, this is a spectacular job by the offensive line coach, staying with your blocks, not giving up because you think the play is dead. It's a better job by the running back by keeping his feet moving. Well, here's a third-string running back making a great move. When you get somebody that runs as well as what we have seen Anderson run, it really motivates and spurs the lineman and spur, uh, inspires your entire team. We also saw Brock Bowen in at fullback on the last play. His flags are flying. Ball start, 11 on the offense. 
five yard penalty, third down. I've never been able to understand why receivers should jump offside. They go on the movement of the ball, not on a count. They're out so wide they can't hear. All they have to do is look at the ball. Sometimes they make mistakes. <laughs> I would say something about coaching right now, but I think I'll let it go. <laughs> yeah, that's a wise move. <laughs> Third down and seven for Cantwell in the Louisville offense as we're inside two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Cantwell has his man wide open, and it's a first down, and Beaumont is free up near midfield. Kansas State trying to strip the ball. They didn't come close. It's a third down conversion, and Louisville's on the move again. Okay, Coach, take a look at Hunter Cantwell, the way he stays in the pocket. The line does a great job of forming a pocket, gets set, throws the ball exactly where he wants to go, doesn't even get touched. Now look at the route by the receivers. But you know what really impresses me is how much quicker the receivers are and the running back for Louisville in the Kansas State defense. Keep it on the ground. There's Anderson back in the game. Anderson into Kansas State territory. And stopped again by Daniel Calvin. This has been a terrific job by offensive coordinator Jeff Brown, particularly in the third quarter, of mixing his plays up on different downs between the passing and the running. And extraordinary balance for Brown's team as well. They've run for 222 yards. They've passed for 221. Brown, a standout quarterback here at Louisville, as were his brothers. Of course, there some famous or infamous heated exchanges between Brian and his brother when Brian was a quarterback here. Now in his first season with the Green Bay Packers, Anderson was tracked down by Hanson Tacona before he could get started. He's going to bring up third in about nine. Well, don't forget, there is Phil Mickelson arriving here on the scene because Friday here in Louisville, we're not far away in Valhalla, USA and Europe, 2008 Ryder Cup. The Europeans have owned the cup. For six years, they've won five of the last six, and that fierce rivalry returns to American soil at Valhalla. U.S. underdogs, Mickelson, trying to knock off golf's hottest player, Padraig Harrington, in favor of Europe. Coverage starts Friday, 7 a.m. Eastern time, on ESPN from Valhalla. Hunter Cantwell looking for Ty Chester on the slam. Blair Irvin playing underneath nicely. Not much room to throw that one. He put some heat on that one. Well, that's he not a problem. They, they're working on progressions. They're working on recognition. They are quite pleased with arm strength. No issues there for Mr. Cantwell. And Cantwell had the meltdown in the fourth quarter against Kentucky. He had three interceptions, a fumble. He was born of frustration, he told us yesterday, just trying to make a play when nothing was there to try to win that rivalry game. And Kansas State puts it on the ground. Murphy, who had the great return earlier, Muffed it in a second straight muffed punt, one for each side, and Kansas State quite fortunate to get that one back here late in the third quarter. Kansas State still has a shot. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Well, Coach Ron Prince very active on the sideline. After his quarterback, Freeman, took that last hit at the end of their last drive, he came up to him and said, stay calm, stay focused, stay disciplined, stay within the system, and I don't want you running all over the place. Freeman is a guy who likes to stay in the pocket. He has one yard passing in the second half. A lot of that due to excellent defense by Louisville. Freeman, and pressure from the back. Got rid of it just in time. It's incomplete. He was looking for Murphy again. What, what is Louisville doing so effectively right now against this Kansas State offense? Well, they're doing two things. Number one, they're playing man coverage and they're able to cover the receivers because they're faster than them. The second thing, the defensive linemen are rushing, but they're staying in their pass lanes. In other words, it's hard for you to throw in between and around defensive linemen. Notice he doesn't have the pocket mark, sort of breaks down. Earl Heyman, Adrian Grady have provided a lot of that pressure. Now Freeman gets heat, and he's able to avoid Mitchell and fires it out toward Murphy, who bobbled it as he went out of bounds. And not much is going right for the Wildcats at the moment. Coach, it just seems like the Kansas State offense is out of sync. Whenever a receiver does get open, 
the quarterback gets them the ball, but they're not catching the ball. And then when the quarterback gets pressured, he's not delivering the ball to the receiver. Absolutely. But when they're playing you man and man free, Mark, you got to be able to slip a back out of the backfield. you got to be able to do some different things to take advantage of the man coverage because you cannot beat the defensive backs one-on-one. -on -one. The receivers aren't fast enough. Getting late in the third quarter. Going to throw it out quickly and get the completion, trying to use the speed, but little Brandon Banks will not make it to the first down marker. It's going to be fourth down for Kansas State as we come to the end of the third quarter. The Big East with a high-profile victory over the Big 12 last week when South Florida took down Kansas. Tonight, Louisville with a two-touchdown lead on K-State as we head to the fourth quarter. We'll have it for you when we come back. But over a couple of weeks and changed things. This was a despondent bunch around Louisville after the opening week, but they've got plenty to cheer about tonight. Impressive through three quarters. The Cardinals up 28-14 on Kansas State. First play of the fourth quarter is Kansas State. will punt it away. Doug Beaumont deep to receive it for the Cardinals. Beaumont looking for room on the outside. He got a block. Beaumont made it across the 40-yard line. Set up good field position as Louisville takes over again. Our game track started with Josh Freeman firing a 45-yard touchdown pass, but later things started to come unglued on Freeman. Second half, a couple of interceptions, both by Woody Terrain, to give Louisville some momentum, and Hunter Cantwell has been able to take advantage. Over 200 yards passing. He's thrown for two touchdowns, and the Bills done it on the ground as well. Freshman Victor Anderson, over 100 yards rushing. A 29-yard touchdown, a 56-yard touchdown, and as a result, the Cardinals with a 28-14 lead. Kansas State offense has produced just one score, the other coming on an 86-yard punt return by Deion Murphy. Brock Bolin back into the backfield for Louisville, and he's stopped in the backfield by Brandon Harold, the 6'6", 264-pound freshman from East St. Louis. Ron Prince's defense has been Cut apart pretty good tonight by Jeff Brom and the Louisville offense. 436 yards they've allowed, and this is a major step up in competition, certainly from their opening two games against North Texas and Montana State. And so far, the Wildcats have paid the price. Second and 12. Cantwell has an open man. Again, it's Beaumont who's still on his feet inside the 40-yard line of Kansas State and Louisville threatening to put this thing close to out of reach. The thing about Hunter Cantwell, he's in total control and command of this offense for Louisville. Seems like he's relaxed, just going through his progressions and his motions, coach, running, rolling out with the football, but it's a great block by the backer, cutting down the linebacker, but he just seems comfortable right now in the pocket. Boy, this is coming out party. There's no doubt this is his offense. A couple of years ago, Cantwell played for the injured Brian Brom against Kansas State, threw for 173 yards and a touchdown, a 23-6 win. Stats much gaudier tonight. Again, it's Anderson on the corner. Anderson dancing free at about the 30-yard line. Another good run by the freshman. Seems at this point in the game, Louisville is just imposing their will on this Kansas State offense, whether it be through the air or on the ground. The longer the game goes, the more dominating they are becoming. I, I, I can assure you there's some people in the Big East that have to play Louisville saying, this isn't what I expected after the Kentucky <laughs> game. Whoa, let's step back here a minute. Anderson averaging over 11 yards per carry. Can't well be... Unassuming, fifth-year senior, waited his turn behind Ryan Brom. Having quite a night tonight. Anderson finding the sledding tough, but keeps his feet moving against Uva Pomelli. Leading tackler on the Kansas State defense. And we're running back a little tough to corral. Well, this is a critical play coming up. They've got to get a stop here. Uh, Kansas State, I'm referring to, Mark, because if they can, they just got to get some momentum going. They have nothing to sap. Right now, Louisville's feeling it. If you're on offense on Louisville, you feel that you can do just about anything, particularly the offensive line, because you're getting such a great push in the running game. But there comes a time you're on the sideline and you say, hey, we got to gamble now. we got to make something happen, even if it's bad. Third down and two. Two tight ends, the power runner, Bowen. Bowen, who earlier in the game was stopped on a fourth and short, deep in the red zone this time. 
They still win the official is coming across. Well, now you look at it, and that yellow line that they draw it on the field so the players know exactly how far to go. It's a first. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nose of the football right on the yellow. I didn't see the yellow. I mean, I'm looking out on the field. I just, <laughs> with my they vision. Drew, they draw the line out there on the field, so you'll see it. <laughs> you know, people ask me, how do they do that? I said, I don't know. Hey, I finished the lower half of my high school class. I, I didn't do well in science. Miracle of modern technology. It, it really is. I wish somebody would explain to me how they do that. I don't know why you don't believe me. I told you it was a first down. They didn't even need to bring the chains out. <laughs> By the nose of the football, it's a first down. Ron Prince having a conversation with Gary Chandler. Strong safety. The Big 12 defensive newcomer of the year last year. Kansas State defense in desperate need of a stop. There's still a lot of time to go. They've got a high-powered attack. The Kansas State has done nothing since the first quarter. And Anderson is free again. Victor Anderson inside the 10. Anderson touchdown. What a night for the freshman. What happens here? They go unbalanced and playing man-to-man -man coverage. There's nobody on that half of the field. See how they go unbalanced? There's nobody covering the defensive back down that side who goes for a touchdown. Where's the containment? Well, they, they don't have any real containment, Mark, because the tackle's not eligible, so they don't have a defensive back on that half of the field. Ogle Hall was the guy outside who got caught inside, and the extra point is true, and Louisville's lead is now three touchdowns, precisely the number of touchdowns that Victor Anderson has scored tonight. Anderson, 12 carries, 142 yards and three touchdowns. When we come back, a weekend to remember with a statue we'll all enjoy. A feel-good night in Louisville, largely because of the freshman running back, Victor Anderson. The Cardinal offense is in high gear. They're up 35-14 on Kansas State. Anderson finished off a six-play, 56-yard drive with his third touchdown of the night, his second coming on a pitch to the weak side. Where he beat everybody to the corner and went into the end zone, and Louisville firmly in control. Kansas State in a world of trouble. Over 12 minutes to go, they've got to get their passing offense going behind Josh Freeman, and Wildcats will have a chance with Aubrey Quarles. Quarles up across the 25-yard line, and that's where Freeman will get it back. Well, this past weekend, on Friday, in fact, a statue was unveiled of our good friend Lou Holtz in South Bend, campus of Notre Dame. He gave a pep talk to the team, spoke at the pep rally. And last Saturday, and you see Lou and Charlie Weiss. At halftime of the Michigan-Notre Dame game, he was honored for his selection to the 2008 class of the National Football Foundation's College Hall of Fame. Also a reunion from the national championship team of 20 years ago. 1988, Lou's Irish team went undefeated, won the title. Big weekend. We even, we even let him get out of the studio for that week. As Freeman fires on first down, and this is the best offensive play that the Wildcats have had this half. They have a good special teams play with Brandon Banks getting it out close to midfield. And the Wildcats are going to have to be in a hurry, and it was a it was, we missed you over the past weekend, but it was, yeah. it was a great weekend in South Bend for you. It, it was a tremendous weekend. Um, all my children went back here with the exception of Skip, which was a little occupied in East Carolina, but it was just a very special weekend to see the players, et cetera, and the fans were unbelievable. Notre Dame played great, Mark, <laughs> as I predicted. Freeman over the middle. He's got his man. It's Mastrude the tight end. Mastrude running for the end zone, and maybe Kansas State is alive. Jerry Mastrude, touchdown by the Cats. Two plays. Just like that, and there's a lot of time left. You just need one to get the momentum going. Absolutely. Now they need a stop on defense, or if they need to score on defense. So what did you tell the uh, Fighting Irish in your pep talk to get them fired up against going against Michigan? I know you had to do something special because <laughs> the way that they played, the six turnovers that Michigan gave them in the game. <laughs> I couldn't tell you, Mark, or I'd have to kill you because we're going to use the same speech against Pittsburgh. Ooh, <laughs> we play that. They're going to need it. <laughs> no, no, I, I want to tell you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Char wait, Charlie White did. Who, who, who plays them? Who plays them? When Pittsburgh plays Notre Dame. Okay, thank okay. you. 
Much better. Two plays, nearly the length of the field, and maybe Ron Prince's team has a little bit of life. Josh Freeman, his second touchdown pass of the night. 35-21 now, plenty of time to go. Mentioned part of the celebration last weekend in South Bend was 20-year anniversary of Blues National Championship. An undefeated beat West Virginia in the Fiesta Bowl. Well, 25 there could make plays for you, couldn't he? Yeah, he could run till we got hold up and worked <laughs> with Rock and Ishmael. He could turn out the light and get in bed before it got dark. <laughs> Tony Rice, the quarterback, and Notre Dame beat West Virginia 34-21, won the national championship, proving, I guess, that the Holtz family has been vexing the uh, good people of, the, of your home state of West Virginia for 20 years. First it was you taking a national championship opportunity away, and then Skip beating the Mountaineers earlier this year. Kansas State following its touchdown. Driving it back to Johnny Patrick of Louisville. Patrick is swarmed under at about the 18-yard line. Otis Johnson there to make the stop on the kickoff. So now we have a two-touchdown game. Kansas State getting the quick strike scoring drive, an opportunity here. What are you telling your defense if you're, uh, if you're Ron Prince getting set to go out and try to slow down Louisville? You know, we need to stop here. We'd like to have a turnover, but force three and out. We got the momentum. We got time. We can win this football game, but we need to stop. I think if you're Louisville, you want to move the chains offensively, establish the run, particularly on first down, get five or more yards, kill the clock, and get out of here with the victory. <laughs> That is certainly what Hunter Cantwell would like to do. Remarkably balanced offensive attack for Louisville tonight. 252 yards on the ground, 242 more passing. The strong right arm of Cantwell, and he'll throw it on first down. And he has Bowen as running back out of the backfield. Bowen lost his hat. That guy's so tough, I don't know if he needs one anyway. That time, Kansas State Gamble brought a corner blitz and left nobody in the flat. Well, the coach, if the quarterback's rolling out like that, if you're a blitzer, get your hands up. You can't just run at the quarterback. You've got to get your hands up and disrupt the throwing line. 12-yard pickup. Louisville. That, field position. Like that was some kind of collision with wow. Chris Carney. His both helmets came off. <laughs> Men without hats. Decent scene group. More entertaining with collisions on the sideline. Short gain. We've seen Victor Anderson lose much of the night, but not that time. And a short pickup, maybe about three yards. Antoine Moore, senior coming off an injury last year. Here's Bowen there. <laughs> you see Rod Prince going over, congratulating him. He liked the effort. Bowen, the transfer from Illinois, who's been around this program for the last few years and a valuable part of it. Play the running back position. They can stick him in at fullback. A reliable guy and a good receiver. There's Brock on second down and six. On a fullback in the backfield with him. Cantwell getting a little heat and firing it into the middle. And a terrific grab again by Doug Beaumont. What a night he's had. Ula Pomelli just about cut Hunter Cantwell in half. But Beaumont, nine catches. 119 yards on the night. He has been instrumental in this Louisville passing attack. They cannot cover him one-on-one. -on -one. They're trying. They're trying to hold him. Still didn't work. He even had safety help on the play, and they still couldn't get there. So first down, and Louisville's on the move again. Two tight ends in the game. Both of them to Cantwell's left, and they'll run that way. Anderson, loose. Victor Anderson down close to the 30-yard line. It just seems like Louisville has so much more speed, Mark. Here is Victor Anderson, and they run this play a couple of times for a score, Coach. Both times they scored on it when they went on balance, ran the quick pitch to the weak side. And I think it's a good compliment. They compliment each other so well. Brock Bowen hits the ball inside Victor Anderson, gets to the outside with his speed. It's just tough to defend right now. It's a pretty good dynamic. Last run was 18 yards. Has 164 on the nine on just 14 carries. And Louisville's in position to answer the touchdown. Here's Bowen. Bowen's inside the 30 and down close to the 27. Oh, but the amazing thing, Victor, uh, 
Anderson just has unbelievable quickness in the way he's been able to do things. You see that last play, the finish by the center, Eric Wood. He had a defender eight yards down the field to play and pancaked him. Louisville offensive line has played extremely well. We've mentioned a couple of times, a couple of starters, George Bussey, Mark Wetterer, out of the lineup. Cardinals run the ball extremely effectively, and they do it again with Bowen. Bowen knocked down at the 25-yard line by Ula Pomeli. 8.20 to go in the fourth quarter here in Louisville. Papa John's Cardinals Stadium. The homestanding Cardinals on top of Kansas State, 35-21. Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, Mark May, Rob Stone here with you. It's Ron Prince's team desperately needing a stop to try to follow up its most recent touchdown strike, trying to get back in the game, and time is becoming an enemy of the Wildcats right now. Hunter Cantwell has had an outstanding night, thrown for 274 yards, and Victor Anderson has been a freshman sensation at running back for the Cardinals. But here is the veteran brought Bowen, and Bowen rumbling into the red zone. Another first down, third down conversion for Louisville. Now for a little bit more on the freshman who has been so dynamic tonight and is headed back on the field right now, here's Rob Stone. All right, here's a little TV talk. This here is what we call a 2D. It's like a, a cheat sheet. If you look at running back for Louisville, you see Victor Anderson nowhere. You got to turn the page, Reese, number 20, to find Victor. Now Louisville hosts UConn next Friday night on ESPN2. I have a funny feeling Mr. Anderson may appear on the 2D next week. Powell has played well too, Rob, but he might very well. And Bowen has joined Anderson in the 100-yard club on the ninth. And Olu Hall stops Anderson, but not before he gets down to the 10-yard line. The Cardinals are threatening to score again. Now, this is what the Cardinals have remaining in the UConn game that Rob mentioned. A couple of road trips in the Big East. Hey, look, things could be worse. Pittsburgh, if it gets its act together, that could be a difficult trip in early November. But Syracuse has been abysmal. Memphis has been disappointing for that road trip, which is a non-conference game. And then, of course, the trip to Rutgers later in the year, and Rutgers also struggled. I I'm just telling you, Pittsburgh has to get its act together. I don't see what's wrong with that. Getting the stare down. Anderson getting the smack down. Kansas Jones. State defense, Ula Pamelli, there to make the stop. The worst thing that could have happened to Kansas State is the ball control, as Mark said. This is what Louisville has to do, and they have done it. Now, the worst thing was, Coach, they scored quickly on offense, bang, two plays, and all of a sudden they couldn't get the Louisville offense off the field. You, you Their defense has been out there all day. You have momentum. you got to maintain it. Capture the moment. Louisville has run 80 plays tonight, nearly twice the number the Kansas State has run, only 42, and this one is huge for the Kansas State defense because Louisville has been a little shaky in the place-kicking game. Cantwell getting a lot of heat, and Cantwell will go down. Back there to make the tackle, and putting him in a fourth down situation is Vlad Faustin. Faustin making a huge play. It'll bring up fourth and 15. And now Tim Doherty will come on to attempt the field goal. Chris Philpott had some struggles, missed an extra point, was wide on an earlier field goal attempt, so now it'll be Doherty who will attempt the 36-yarder. This to make it a three-possession game. Doherty. It's good. And the lead. 17 and Kansas State better get busy and get busy in a hurry. It's been a terrific night for Louisville so far. We'll see if they can finish. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky, Feed Your Wild Side, and in part by Lowe's. For all your home improvement needs, Lowe's, let's build something together. Ryder Cup cranks up on Friday at Valhalla, just about, oh, 19 miles from where we are, Papa John Cardinal Stadium in Louisville. United States trying to recapture the Ryder Cup. Europeans have won five of the previous six, and right now it would behoove Kansas State to go ahead, grip it, rip it, and launch one at the pen because they don't have time to play conservatively. Down 17 with just over five minutes to go. 
But you still have chance, you have hope. You got to be positive on the sideline, but you got to make things happen. Nothing would help Kansas State any more than a good kickoff return or an onside kick. And they have returned a punt for a touchdown tonight, and they are very strong in special teams. It certainly helped their cause if they were able to do so. There's Aubrey Quarles, and it's not going to happen there. Stopped about the 24-yard line, so it looks as if the Big East is going to win a second straight against the Big 12, dating back to South Florida's win over Kansas last Friday night. We'll have another matchup of those two conferences on College Football Primetime, presented by Applebee's tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern Time. West Virginia and Colorado, a chance to see Patrick White, Dan Hawkins rebuilding that Buffalo program, went to a bowl game last year, trying to build on that success. Buffs and the Mountaineers at 8.30 Eastern Time. Now here is Josh Freeman. Freeman, Jaron Mastrew, those two hooked up for a touchdown a few moments ago, but it's not going to go very far this time as we tick inside five minutes to go. Now, you look at the non-conference games, and some of these results can be skewed based on competition, but it's the SEC and the Big 12 leading the way at the moment, but the Big 12 about to take a loss here tonight unless Josh Freeman can really rally the troops from this 17-point deficit. What does it mean to you when you see the conference not conference record? Tells me who the, uh, the Pac-10 is playing. You go look at their non-conference games. You look at the other ones that play those roster games where you get everybody in. You mean the Pac-10 that just got shut out by the Mountain West Conference 4 to nothing last week? Yeah, but also you look at who Southern Cal played. I mean, they, they, play, Southern Cal, okay. they play Virginia. They play Notre Dame. They play Ohio they State. They play Virginia. They play Ohio State. Okay. I mean, all the way along the line. They're non-conference game are impressive. Moral of the story is go play easy games. But, you know, the, the Pac-10 has challenged itself more than the other weeks. Absolutely. No I have respect for that. I mean, Washington played BYU. They had Oklahoma last weekend, mm -hmm. which is, that's, it never seems to be a good idea, the way the Sooners are playing right now. Offside. 95 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Results in a first down. So Maurice Mitchell jumping offside. Keeps K-State's hope barely flickering. As you see what... USC has left on his schedule. Now, the Trojans, the Trojans' biggest obstacle is not getting de-pantsed as it did last year against Stanford. But even, even the home and road games stack up favorably for them. It's hard to tell after last weekend, but you would think Oregon and Arizona State and Cal, the three toughest teams, all of them go to the Coliseum. Well, the, the problem is you have a different team each week. Not uh, with that uh, team, Coach. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, we said that last year, Stanford. Uh, it happens every year, Mark. You can't tell what's going to happen. I, I think Southern Cal is by far the best football team in the country right now. Oklahoma may be close. I think there's, uh, you know, I think there's also the dynamic, too, a Coach, and you can speak to this from having spent some years in the SEC. You get into conference play, everybody knows you, you know your stuff, you lose some of that intimidation factor, and it's, it's a different deal when you're playing against conference opponents. All you have to do is look at what the average margin of victory for Southern Cal was in the conference game, and you'd say, hey, it's like something like seven points. It's a different team every week, as you say, but the bottom line is if you look at the Stanford game last week, you can't use that as a total barometer because you had a quarterback that played with a broken finger. They shouldn't have been in the game. So scratch that. This is a team that at he home was in the game. almost invincible if you look what they've been able to do. They lost the a 40-point underdog. You see this happen every what, week What did they do somebody. last week? They, they beat a team that was ranked number five by four touchdowns. Absolutely. They and they could have been for that. that. Okay, okay but, but by the same token, I sat here last week and said there's no way UNLV, which lost by 40 points to Utah, is going to beat Arizona State. Uh, by the same token, you didn't think New Mexico, which got beat, well, I could, thought beat New Mexico could beat Arizona. I, I, New Mexico I really beat did. Rocky Long and his crew beat him before. Be, because I tell you, I thought this was a year for Arizona. I thought they may really and truly challenge, and they may very well before it's all over. Upsets happen all the time. Hey, it's obvious you've never been a coach, Mark, because I'll promise you, Pete Carroll's not going to sleep every night. Uh, he sleeps very comfortably. Right down right. the middle, Mastroon had a chance to make a catch. And they, they will be double-digit favorites in every game they play through the remainder of the season, except for one, except for 
Notre Dame, they'll probably be a four or five touchdown. No, 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 but, no, but they that, were yeah. double-digit favorite against Stanford last year, too. Yeah. I mean, that's the point, is that some unexpected things can happen. As you see, but, some of the big games that we have coming up this weekend, Georgia, Arizona State. Okay, hey, Mark, we're going to be doing several games during the week, and one of them will be near the end of the year, and we'll come back to this conversation. I want you to remember, okay. Southern Cal will have at least three very, very close games in the fourth I quarter. just wish you guys would look at it as the glass half full oh, for I, once instead of always I, being I, half no, empty. No, 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 let, let me tell you, now, I, I think Southern Cal is the best football team in the country, but I'm saying that Ball any start. team. 64 on the offense. Five yards penalty. Second down. Any team that wins the national championship in football is going to have to win a close game in the last minute. And anybody who wins the national championship in basketball is going to have to make the last shot or somebody miss the last shot in order to do so. And you know, might be worth mentioning too, and I'm not trying to find roadblocks. I'm just telling you I don't think any team's invincible. Yeah. SC, last time it went to Corvallis, lost. I know Oregon State. You know, as long as you keep Oregon State west of the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> <laughs> They're tough. Now, you, you, you put them on a plane, they came here, and they got run. They uh, went to Cincinnati and got run. run. I, I'm, not, I'm not even sure if they made it to Penn State a couple of weeks ago. You look at the All-State standings yeah. review, the AP top ten, the top two teams in the land, and the two teams that at least to this point have appeared to be the most dominant mm -hmm. take the weekend off. And look who Arizona State's playing. They're playing Georgia. That's a non-conference game. And I admire that. Georgia going west for the first time since 1960. Is Freeman on third down? Has his man Banks, and Banks, the little fella, is loose, and Brandon Banks is going to score. Touchdown, Kansas State, with just over three minutes to go, and with the extra point, this can be a 10-point game. Wow. 59 yards. You look at the little guy at 5'7", 142 pounds, and you know he has speed, but he's got great balance, and he's pretty stout. He's pretty strong. He runs through a lot of arm pads. Yeah. Yeah, people have great quickness at center, but boy, it's a vision. Being able to see, you cannot underestimate how important that is in a great football player. So Banks now with seven catches, 153 yards. He scored twice. Ron Prince telling us the other day when he recruited him that he was warned that by, by people who'd seen him, you're going to be shocked at how small he is. And he said they had prepared him so much for that that he really wasn't surprised. And when he watched him play, he said Banks ran every route that we like to run, made all the catches, great speed and quickness, and thought, why not? Now, it's a 38-27 game, and Kansas State is going for the two-point conversion. It's going to work out fine, although I'm not really sure why they chose to do so there because it's still a two-possession game at nine points. Well, I, the only real logical reason would be if they kick a field goal and score a touchdown, which is possible, they would now win the game. They wouldn't go into overtime. Well, let me give you the other side of that since this uh, tends to be in uh, a pet peeve of mine. If you miss it, <laughs> really? If you, yeah, <laughs> Mark and I have, have done this for a long time. If you miss it, that when you score a touchdown, you have to do it. So, you know, uh, uh, I mean, it worked. It was I, fine. They I got did, the, did they got make the it? And they made it the right decision. That's, no, That's you no, don't no. That it. doesn't make it the Mark, right decision. You know better than that. You're, you're the one all the time on Saturdays. You sit there and go, just because that happened doesn't mean it was the right thing to do. Hey, you must have two two microphones because I only get a chance to speak <laughs> half as much as you do. <laughs> well, then go ahead and tell me why after I do this promo. Georgia and Arizona State, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ABC is the Bulldogs. No Sean Marino taking his Heisman candidacy to the West Coast where the Sun Devils want to atone for that fourth quarter and overtime meltdown against the running Rebels. Harry Dog will be there, I'm sure. Ugga will be too. They give Muhammad Masqua high fives when needed. Okay, so go. Let's go back to the conversation. Okay, they were successful, but there's two reasons why he probably tried to do it. Number one, that now if they kick a field goal and score a touchdown, there's no overtime. Point number two, you got momentum your way. Keep giving your team momentum, being positive. Hey, we're making. And, and the quarterback took it and just ran it right down their throat. Now, if they can get this onside kick, they still have three timeouts left. This game isn't completely over yet, and that's why I think they logically did it. You want to keep the momentum going. Okay, would you have done it? No, I would have kicked it. Timeout. I would have kicked it, no doubt. Second timeout of the half. <laughs> 
Thank you, Counselor, for making my point. This comes well, up on the final wait, verdict. Wait, You're in wait, trouble. Wait, wait, which is probably another reason <laughs> to say. Wait, wait, which is probably another reason to say he made the right choice because I wouldn't have done it. But then again, that's why I'm up here. And he's down there, Mark. Mark, would you have gone for two there? No. I mean, you know, we have time here since we well, have time out on the field. Otherwise, we'd let it go at this point. Well, why don't you just say, <laughs> they, why didn't they? they what? Why don't you say what? They went for six before on the play before, right? <laughs> well, that's okay. Great play fake by Hunter Cantwell. He has played extremely well. Uh, got a lot of criticism after the Kentucky game, but I'll tell you, the veteran has, has stepped up quite unassumingly. He's done a great job. Let me make one other point. By making that two-point conversion, <laughs> now, if you score a touchdown and they have to punt, they cannot take a safety now. Okay, like you that's take fair. a safety, say, now, instead of punting the ball, let's just take a safety. Okay. Hey, he took all those things out. If you give me enough time, I can really, hey, that's a great call down there, Coach well, well, How about this? Hunter Cantwell probably played the best game of his career tonight. Didn't turn the ball over through for two touchdown yeah. passes. Was efficient running their offense. Absolutely. Now Kansas State. Now you're State. sure they shouldn't have gone for two, Coach? No, I, I'd kick it deep, though. Okay, going for a little pooch kick, hoping he's going to bounce around a while. And Josh Chichester, who had a couple of big drops on potential touchdown passes in the first half, is solid with the hands and recovers it for Louisville. And now Kansas State have to use all those timeouts. Remember, the new timing rules this year, when we get inside the last couple of minutes, we revert back to, to the old timing rules with five stoppages. Boy, this is a prime example. You never give up. You never quit. As a coach, you're always trying to look for a way to bring them back. And all of a sudden, you know, had they gotten that, or if they pull up the stop here, pull off the stop, use their three time out, this thing ain't over yet. And from a play calling standpoint, how aggressive are you in the passing game right now, knowing that Kansas State has those three timeouts? Do you make them use them by keeping it on the ground? Yeah, I make them use their timeouts. Absolutely. 3.20 to go, and. Mark Bowen gets nothing. It'll be second down. The clock winds now and has stopped as the timeout has been called. Kansas State using its first one. And I'm sure you're familiar with these by now. The 40-second play clock after each play. It uh, starts immediately, but after stoppages, it's back to the old 25-second clock. And the game clock now restarts after out-of-bounds plays once the ball is respotted, except in the final two minutes of the half, and we're a minute and 14 seconds away from that with Kansas State when it gets the win and if it gets the ball back, being able to use the out-of-bounds to stop the clock just as we have for a number of years in college football. I would not be surprised to eventually see Louisville throw the football in this situation because Kansas State is committing everybody to the run other than the ones that are playing man coverage on the receivers. Do you think they go a little unbalanced and use that pitch play that's been so effective for them this evening? Well, I would think after twice they would finally figure out a way to defend it's that. Work twice. But yep. At least for the next minute 14, there, there's no penalty for, for going out of bounds if you run it that way. So it, it might be worth the risk. You know, in the old days, you had to make sure your running back stayed in bounds to keep the clock running. Anderson gets the ball. Gets up to about the 33, and it's going to bring up a third down. And right now, very little time has been burned off the clock. 3.08 remaining as Kansas State uses its second time out of the hand. Now, if they can stop them, but the pass will, or the clock will also stop on an incomplete pass. In other words, once you go out of bounds, they'll reset it. But if the pass is incomplete, it does not start until the snap of the ball. Right, and that's as it's always been. That, that, that did not change with the new clock rules. You see Ryan Prince exhorting his defense, needing one more stop and another opportunity to see if they can draw closer to Louisville here. 38 to 29. Both defenses very highly ranked. Those statistics can be grossly misleading this time of year, but by and large, with the exception of a couple of big plays, the Louisville defense has, has played awfully well in this game tonight. We've talked about the impact that Ron English has had on this defense. Kansas State off to the 2-0 start this game tonight. They need to rally to avoid their first loss. You see what they have on the horizon. Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, a couple of those being on the road. Bad news for them, they missed Texas. They've beaten them the last couple of years. 
once in Manhattan and once in Austin. Now the reverse to Trent Guy. Guy is being chased by Hall, and he's struggling for the first down marker, and he's not going to make it. Hall, who's been beaten to the corner on a couple of occasions on a weak side pitch play, trying to recover this time, was able to get out there in time to stop Trent Guy. And it's, it's just a remarkable thing that Guy is actually able to play for Louisville. It was on July 5th in the wee hours of the morning just outside the Louisville nightclub that 19 shots were fired in his direction. Only one of them thankfully hit him. He was injured and in the hospital for a while, had surgery, he was released less than a week after being shot. And by August, late August, he returned to practice. Steve Pragdorp telling us that, that he was just so grateful to be able to see Trent in the hospital and you know, just a few inches away from it really being a catastrophic situation. And Murphy, who's returned a punt for a touchdown for the second time tonight, muffs it and was fortunate to corral it and give Kansas State the ball. There is a flag on the field at about the 46-yard line of the Cardinals. The amazing thing. Holding, 20 on the return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. Amazing thing, 19 shots were fired. He was hit with one bullet. Nobody else was injured mm -hmm. or wounded. It was great to see Trent back on the field. Craig Thorpe telling us yesterday is just an indication of how society has changed that, you know, back in his day and hours too, that we dust up oftentimes just settled with some fisticuffs and now you know, there's uh, far greater dangers out there. But he did say that the good news in all of this, it has been a galvanizing thing for the team that this stage of a young man's life, they often see themselves as 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Yeah. And they obviously know that's not the case now. Trent Guy back playing for the Cardinals, and we're certainly grateful for that. Two and a half to go, Kansas State trying to mount one last ditch effort to pass headed toward Quarles and incomplete. They'll come up with a second and ten. I thought it was really interesting on how Steve Craig Thorpe put it that we only have these players around us for four hours a day, but we're responsible for them for 24 hours a day. And Coach, you've been in that situation for a long time. How difficult is it to manage young men when they're not around you, they're not around the coach? Well, it's difficult, but that's why it's so important to recruit character and integrity. Flags flying. Left tackle. Ball start. 78 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That is Alisana Alisana. He's called for the false start. I would put Freeman in the shotgun where he could get rid of the ball quicker, have, have a little bit more time to throw. And now after the false start penalty, they're behind the chains with under two and a half to go and down by nine. Freeman has time, Mastro has the ball and he's headed for the out of bounds marker. Very short pickup. It'll bring up third and long. Now here's an example of the new clock rule because we have not reached the two-minute mark yet. And see the ball has been set for play and the clock is now started. Once we get inside two minutes, when you get out of bounds, it will not start until the snap of the ball. So precious seconds going away for Kansas State right now. And they need not only to score on this drive, they need to get it back and score again down by nine. Freeman on third down. Ball is deflected and incomplete, and this is going to be the last chance for Kansas State. Maurice Mitchell gets his hands up and deflects the ball. It'll be fourth and 12 now for Kansas State with two minutes left in the game. Coach, I would rather see more of a sense of urgency from teams in, in a no-huddle, two-minute offense. Get up to the line of scrimmage, get your formation set, because they don't realize when they jog or lollygag over the formation from one side to the other, that wastes six, seven, eight seconds off the clock. And now the offensive line has got to give you protection. You're trying to win the football game. Give them time. Give your receivers time to get open. I'd roll him out of the pocket. By yeah. extra time. And Freeman's in the shotgun. Let's see how many rushers Louisville's going to bring. A couple of guys bluffing up front, and two of them come. Freeman unloads, and it's incomplete. Looking for Brandon Banks, and Louisville will take over on downs. As Freeman fired toward Banks. That ball might have been deflected. It was indeed. 
Good quick hands by Latarius Thomas, a sophomore out of New Smyrna Beach, Florida, and Cragthorpe's team, it appears, barring utter catastrophe for Louisville, is going to hang on and win. Coach, we've said it before, and we'll say it again. It's the defense that really played extremely well and came up with big plays for Louisville. Ron English, the defensive coordinator, has done a tremendous job with this defense. Absolutely, but let's not forget. This is the Louisville offensive football team that turned it over against Kentucky. It's not had a turnover tonight in the final play. Brock Bowen with the carrying is down to the 20 yard line. There were plenty of scouts in attendance tonight to watch both of these quarterbacks, particularly Josh Freeman, Rob. Yeah, in fact, nine NFL scouts here on Turn top of two play. NFL general managers, primarily here to see Freeman, and Kansas State knew this would be a big opportunity for him in, in a national spotlight to show off his stuff to the nation and to the scouts. ESPN Inc.'s Todd Mache told me, you know what, right now there's a lot of comparisons to the Raiders' Jamarcus Russell. You know, he's big, strong, mobile, has problems, though, with his accuracy and decision-making. Mache felt, you know, you could see a meteoric rise in his draft stock if he succeeds when the tougher portion i.e. the Big 12 part of his schedule arrives. Right now he's a top five non-senior quarterback. What have you guys seen from him and what do you take away? What I've seen is a big mobile quarterback and if you're going to compare him to Jamarcus Russell, I think he's got much better feet and I think he runs much better when they give him that opportunity. But I think he's still going through that process of being a more mature quarterback in his decision making. I thought he threw the ball exceptionally well today, but I don't believe he saw very many different coverages this guy. But for every coach that's watching here tonight, you see the importance of being able to run the football. When you can run the football, Mark, you control the game. Your play action, everything else is outstanding. And here's a prime example. I mean, they have just ripped Kansas State on the ground. Coach, as a former player, every time I came to the sidelines, I could care if it's third and 25. Run the football. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. But you've got to establish your toughness. You control the tempo of the game. And with that rush by Victor Anderson, Louisville now has 10 times the number of rushing yards that Kansas State does. They have outrushed them 304 to 30. Wow. And, wow. And that's a credit to the guys up front, particularly Eric Wood. When you're missing your starting left guard, left tackle in this football game to establish the run, they were dominant. Were indeed. In fact, Louisville is approaching. 600 yards of offense. They won't quite get there. There's not enough field left. Well, that, <laughs> barring I, believe, a penalty. I believe for the last four or five years, Louisville has been one of the top 10 offensive teams in the country. And their performance against Kentucky was so woefully inept, you sort of wrote them off. But boy, they're back here tonight, Mark, running the ball, mm -hmm. throwing the ball, catching it. They just had to be uh, so excited. And Coach Cragthorpe, with all the problems he's had, I can't take my hat off to you. Congratulations. And this is a football team to be reckoned with if they play this way every week. They have to play this way every week if they want to have success and get to a bowl game and possibly challenge for the Big East. And you're absolutely right, Coach. The last five consecutive years, they've been in the top ten in total offense. This looks like the Louisville offense from yeah. old. And not the Louisville offense against Kentucky this year, but the Louisville offense from the past five years. Uh, I think uh, the most important thing for Craig Thorpe is that the Louisville defense didn't look like the Louisville defense yeah. last year. Because <laughs> yeah. they may have rushed, they may have gotten 500 total yards plus, they probably would have given up 700 yards last year. Third down is short, it's Bowen the senior in the backfield. Bowen going to nifty feet, getting close to the first down marker. In fact, plowed ahead and got plenty. Louisville. At 91 yards rushing in the first half, they are well over 200 yards rushing in the second half. And here are the stats you alluded to, Coach, in the top 10 the last five seasons, including six last year, number one offense in the land back in 2004 under Bob Petrino. Well, you just have to feel good in that locker room. If you're an offensive lineman or running back, you establish the tempo of the game. You, you, you put your will on their will just by physical toughness and then all play action, everything else opens up. And I feel sorry for 
Mr. Freeman because he never had a running game, Mark. All they did was put their ears back and rush the passer. Never had a chance because once they got behind, they had to go to the pass, and yeah. they got further and further in the hole, and they had to go to the pass more and more. But you're right, Coach. Halftime, I said it. They had nine rushing attempts yeah. for 17 yards in the first half. Now I think it'll be a class thing. They're going to just take a knee. The game's over, and it has been fun to be here. What would Urban Meyer do if it was against <laughs> Miami or Florida State or one of those teams? I tell you what, he would win the game. <laughs> <laughs> and you wouldn't kick a field goal right here like you did against Miami a couple weeks ago? Hey, hey, you want to talk about some comments their linebacker made about Tennessee quitting last year? Did you see that? I did. Spikes. I mean, that's going to be interesting. I thought he put the muzzle on those kids talking to the press. Nothing negative about the opponents. I, I imagine that that will be remembered on Rocky Top when Florida and Tennessee get together this weekend, but it is another solid victory for the Big East over a Big 12 opponent, Louisville. When 10 seconds run off the clock, we'll have a 38-29 victory over Kansas State. Rob Stone down on the field with a very happy, I'm sure, Steve Cragthorpe. Absolutely. Coach, why was Victor Anderson so successful tonight? Well, he did a good job of sinking the ball inside, and then he's got quickness to bounce it back outside. And that's one of the things we wanted to do against their perimeter 34 defense was, uh, was sink the ball inside, get them invited back inside, and then bounce it outside. And Vic did a nice job of that. We pounded them in between the tackles with Brock Bowling a little bit. Uh, so it was a good game plan. How do you utilize this game as you move forward to Big East play next Friday? Well, we got to use it as a springboard. You know, I'm proud of the way our guys have responded the last two weeks, and now we got to respond in a positive manner with something positive going on. So we got to come back to work and get ready for next Friday night. So those are the positives. The negatives, you guys gave up some big plays and big plays on special teams oh, as well. We How do you yeah. address that? Well, we got to tackle. You know, we, we had plenty of guys there. We just got to get the guy on the ground, and he's a, he's a small guy, and he's, he's tough with the ball in his hands. But when, the, when it comes down to it, when you get him in that position, you got to get his butt on the ground. Coach, appreciate you joining us live. Right, Thank you. Friday. All right, Rob Hunter Cantwell gathering in midfield after the victory for Louisville, Kansas State's fifth straight road loss. Our final score, Louisville 38, Kansas State 29. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Line coming up next. For Lou Holtz, Mark May, and Rob Stone and our entire great ESPN crew, I'm Reese Davis saying good night from Louisville.